and we're ready to begin the game. Liverpool kicking off at Anfield behind closed doors. It really is a surreal feeling to be here inside this great football stadium without any paying spectators. Liverpool in the all red kit with the white trim. Sacco in a little bit of trouble on the edge of his penalty area, returning to Anfield where uh, he was a Liverpool player for, um, for a period of time, not with great success in the end and uh, now he has Robertson involved in the action straight away and across comes James McCarthy his fellow Scotsman and puts in the challenge and it bounces out of play James McCarthy um, I say fellow Scotsman Scottish born Republic of Ireland international uh, so Liverpool in possession on the halfway line Alisson the goalkeeper Alexander Arnold Gomez Van Dijk and Robertson Henderson Fabinho and Wijnaldum Salah Firmino and Mane so that's four changes from Liverpool from the starting lineup on Sunday at Goodison Park over on the other side of Stanley Park and Crystal Palace making four changes from their starting lineup when they played quite economically and won so well against Bournemouth on Saturday night Hennessy in goal Ward Sacco Cahill and Van Arnhold Kuyate McCarthy and MacArthur then Townsend and Ayu and Zaha so no Benteke uh, who um, I'm sure we'll find out later but he's not involved he's not on the bench another former Liverpool man who scored the two goals actually for Crystal Palace last time Liverpool lost a Premier League match here over three years ago when Crystal Palace won Sam Allardyce's Crystal Palace as it was at the time and uh, if you've been listening to all of our commentaries on Five Live, I hope you've noticed the fact that we've now brought in that uh, artificial crowd noise. And if you want the commentary without that, you can hear it over on Five Live Sports Extra. And again, tell us what you think. Mane playing the ball out towards the right-hand side. Salah trying to slip the ball into the area, but Van Arnholt blocks it out for a throw on the right-hand side. Liverpool attacking towards the Anfield Road end of the ground, where the Crystal Palace supporters normally would be. Instead, tonight, the lower tier just covered with the red canvases, the Liverpool crest and various slogans. You'll never walk alone. Stay safe. Support us at home. And unity is strength are the, uh, the slogans in white on the red background. Robertson sending the pass forward, but Wijnaldum making the run, but it runs through for a goal kick. So this is 5 Live, Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil, and Mark Lawrenson's up here on the gantry with us, uh, a league title winner many times over with Liverpool. Mark? Straight away, John, and, and nothing probably unexpected is that when Liverpool had the ball j just on the halfway line, all the Crystal Palace players were kind of 30 yards away from the goalkeeper. And it, it literally was 4-3-3. Three, three. So you can tell the way that they're going to be coached in terms of playing tonight, trying to make it very difficult and deny them the space going forward. 0-0 nil, nil the score. Liverpool hoping to move within touching distance of the title tonight if they can win this game. But their opponents are the league's form team. Crystal Palace have won their last four matches, three before the shutdown, the one since and they've won those four games without conceding a goal. Mind you, quite, quite has been the goalkeeper for all of those matches, and also Scott Dan has played alongside Cahill. Dan is on the bench, and there's no Milivojevic, who's an important player, of course, for Crystal Palace too, this evening, so significant changes. But here come Crystal Palace with their danger man, Zaha, on the left-hand side, Van Anholt. Back to Zaha again, square from him. Kuyate with a little touch. Now Townsend makes a run towards the right-hand side, obviously, Crystal Palace bringing in Townsend with his extra pace. Kuyate loses it and Liverpool played forward. Here's Mane. Now Firmino on the halfway line. Firmino does well, shields it with his right foot, then plays it to Mane. And Mane plays the ball in field. A square pass to Henderson who has to stretch for it under pressure from James MacArthur. And so Salah will take it up on the right hand side. Suddenly, with the, the changes that Jurgen Klopp has made tonight. Suddenly it looks also more familiar for Liverpool with Robertson and Mane over here and Alexander-Arnold and Salah over on the right-hand side. Van Dijk in possession at the moment. Here's Henderson who's dropped back towards the halfway line. Jordan Henderson who, uh, of course, received great acclaim and rightly so for the, the very public and vocal role that he's played as the Liverpool captain during the course of the lockdown. Henderson again playing it to the left-hand side to Robertson. And then uh, across comes Wijnaldum, little flick from him, Robertson will do well to reach that, Ward in with the challenge and the ball loops up and uh, bounces into the second row of red seats in the main stand in which we're sitting and Crystal Palace take the throw, Ward then challenge, the ball loops up, stays in play, it's headed forward for uh, Crystal Palace and then 
Kuyate with a challenge on Fabinho that's been given as a free kick. Yeah, there's, I think, a raised hand in there. I don't think it was anything deliberate, but again, and Palace had the ball, didn't they, for about 30 seconds, and the next minute they were all back again defending, so they're going to have to work extremely hard here. Liverpool get the ball back in play. And uh, just noticing my... Oh, my television's just started working. It's, uh, there it is. We've got the pictures now. And usually here, you're usually surrounded by televisions in this position because all of the foreign broadcasters are usually up here. Van Dijk sends a long aerial ball into the Palace area, but Hennessy's able to come and claim it. It is actually Wayne Hennessy, while, of course, uh, continuing as the, the Wales goalkeeper for Palace, this is only his fifth appearance this season. And the first match he's played in the Premier League since, uh, since October. Clearance from him, tall and slender Hennessy, up towards Ayu, who scored three goals in the last three Crystal Palace matches, including the second goal against Bournemouth on Saturday night, that took Palace to 42 points. So this morning, they were just four points behind Manchester United, who uh, have obviously won well this evening. 3-0 against Sheffield United, finished Newcastle 1, Aston Villa 1, Norwich 0, Everton 1, so... Norwich's position even more parlous down at the bottom of the table and another good win for Wolves 1-0 against Bournemouth we'll have more on all of those at half time and uh, more in the Football Daily podcast as well from BBC Sounds Robertson playing the ball in, comes back to Mane then on the edge of the area the challenge comes in from MacArthur and then MacArthur again gets the chance to play it forward but he's actually played it into the backside of Zaha as he was looking to break away and it bounced back to the red shirts of Liverpool ball played out in front of the almost deserted Sir Kenny Dalglish stand on the far side of the ground. I presume Sir Kenny will be here, Mark? Uh, yeah, well, he was at Goodison at the weekend, so I would have thought so, yes. Yes, down in the uh, director's box area on the lower tier in this stand. Here's Mane, Mane curling the ball in field. Fabinho, it was round about thigh height, but he took it down well under no pressure and then gives it to Salah. Salah, flick from Firmino on the edge of the box, it's played back by Fabinho, Henderson curls it into the back post, oh, oh, Townsend's hooked it back across his own goal, and Wijnaldum, when it fell to him, eight yards out, dragged his shot wide. Yeah, I think drag's a very good adjective as well. It, for a split second, he's thinking, I'm going to score the open goal, at the first goal here, and it was a really, really poor contact, but it was a misplaced header by one of the uh, Palace defenders that really gave Wijnaldum the chance, wasn't it? Townsend, at Townsend the back court, yeah. hooked it back across his own penalty area. And that's the thing with them, John, is with, with Palace, and we, and we know that they're very good defensively, but when they get the ball, they've got so far to get up the pitch, which I think is going to be really difficult. Hennessy taking the, the goal kick, Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil, BBC Radio 5 Live. Remarkable thing, you know, the fact that Crystal Palace as I say, coming into this game in ninth place in the table. They've not scored more than two goals in any match they've played this season in all competitions. So um, defence, as you can tell, is a great strength. Here's Salah, right side of the box, challenges coming on him. Zaha actually put in the crucial challenge, ball played to the back post. Uh, Robertson was there, headed away, and then it's cleared further away by McCarthy to the halfway line. And uh, Van Dijk will give it to his right to Gomez after Matip started at the weekend but it was a toe injury Jurgen Klopp said yesterday when he was speaking to us I joined in the Zoom call yesterday when he was doing his pre-match press conference and um, he said yesterday that Matip and uh, Milner as well who's got a hamstring injury wouldn't be involved Matip seems to get relatively minor injuries but he seems to be out for a major long time well he said it was a painful one Gomez to Salah, Salah now bringing the ball forward on his left foot, flights the path into the penalty area, Mane bringing it down, but Ward is right there with him and close. However, Mane's got the ball in, Henderson follies it against the underside of the roof of the Anfield Road stand. Yeah, I couldn't quite get kind of knee and everything over the ball to, to keep it down and it was lucky it actually stayed in the ground. What was that stat you gave us about Crystal Palace? They've not, not scored more than two goals in, in any, any game. match wow. this season. That was a chance for Henderson. It was indeed, yeah. He it tells was. you they can defend then, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, but maybe they'll miss Dan this evening. Saku coming in, who, if you remember, 
you know, it didn't leave on the best of terms with Jurgen Klopp. There were one or two no, disciplinary think, issues. Yeah, there were one or two misdemeanours, I think. Yeah. Consistently late for training and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's no Stevie Dan for Palace then, no, is there? No, there isn't. Liverpool lad as well. Scott Dan brought up. Liverpool fan. Lived uh, and brought up in the Walton area of Liverpool. Did he not score here? I Last think he year did. or year before? I, I think, think the so. year before, yeah. yes. Van Dijk to, playing the ball back to Allison, who made those two important saves late in the game at Goodison Park to preserve the clean sheet. It's a very competitive battle for most clean sheets in the Premier League this season between the goalkeepers. And Allison currently has as many as anyone. Ball played to the right hand side to Alexander Arnold, but uh, it's been cut out by Van Arnholt. Ayu makes the run, that's a good pass from Zaha for Van Anhold. Ayu allowed it to run in field and slipped at the crucial moment, but uh, a, a, an effective break by Crystal Palace then, an important pass, good pass from Zaha. Ball played forward for Alexander Arnold, but that's way beyond Salah and will bounce through for a goal kick. Great pass from Zaha, wasn't it? When he first passed it, you're kind of thinking, where's, where's that going to? And it was brilliant. Beautifully measured. Beautifully measured on a beautiful evening it's absolutely stunning here mm. tonight you can see for oh, I mean miles and miles we've got the Pennines away actually slightly hazy the Pennines but the the green mature trees I mean we'd never be sitting here under normal circumstances no. at this time of year no and also there's no planes is there no, absolutely so that's not. why we can see I think is it not oh we've got a stoppage I was wondering why Hennessy was taking a while to take this goal kick, and this is this is a blow because it's Zaha mm. who is down, and that that that's a great shame. If if he's got a problem here, a great shame for 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 neutral. I think most of the people in the ground are probably neutrals, unusually. And he's getting to his feet. Though. He's on his feet. Ah, just a knock, John. What the issue is when he's picked that up? Oh, wait a minute. Oh no, but it looks like they're going to have to make the change. Is that Max Meyer? Yeah, I think it is. Who is uh, getting himself ready down there. Well, that's a real setback for Crystal Palace. And if they have got ambitions of perhaps pushing for the European places, which you know, is not ridiculous to say that, with the table as, as tight as it is, and Palace in, in the sort of form that they've been in, Zaha is staying on the field. So Meyer's, Meyer is ready. He's got his tracksuit top off, he's ready to come on, and I think that is going to happen, but Zaha is actually staying on the field, so he's not serious enough to have to leave the, the pitch just yet. It's nil-nil, Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil, 12 minutes played here at Anfield on this uh, beautifully mild evening, and uh, Gomez pulling the ball back in field. We're in the shadows here in the, in the main stand, but we can see sunshine. It is sun-soaked Liverpool tonight. Fabinho, Fabinho just forward of the centre circle and uh, the fourth official, who is Mike Dean tonight, is getting his board ready and we will see the change next time the ball goes out of play. I think as you say though, Zaha, I mean he's jogging isn't he? So I just wonder if maybe he's got an underlying injury and you know, it might be his toes and somebody stood on him and uh, it's not going to make him any better certainly. Liverpool still with uh, the ball inside the Crystal Palace half, Liverpool in the red, Crystal Palace in this a great old retro kit, almost all white, but with the red and blue sash across the chest, the diagonal stripe. And the ball played up towards Ayu, who does well, keeps possession. Gives it to Zaha, who's able to take a couple of touches, but not moving easily, it must say. Plays it back to Sacco, who, <laughs> that was very much like the Sacco that we used to watch at Liverpool. He looked very awkward and uncomfortable in possession. Took a little while to get the ball under control and then gave a rather awkward pass to Ward. And then Ayu is caught, centre field, and that's a free kick, and we will now see the change. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's limping off, but it's not a pronounced limp, is it? So, as I say, it must just be a, a, a knock maybe that he's already had and took a chance to play with him tonight, and uh, someone stood on his foot, I would have thought, something like that, having to go off. Yeah, shame shame for the game, as I say, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a great talent, isn't he? Is. he? When he's on his yeah. game, he's, he's uh, really, really dazzling talent. And Max Meyer comes on, who has not scored this season. He actually scored here, last season, for Palace, in what was a 4-3 match, Liverpool win it 4-3. Uh, so he's on, 
and he sprints out and uh, it's a straight swap Crystal Palace's substitute the number seven taking up the position out on the left hand side and that is the end of Zaha's evening after just a quarter of an hour the score still nil nil we'll have uh, more interviews from those earlier matches the uh, the four of them in the Premier League at half time in this match but Palace coming forward and MacArthur has a goal from 25 yards but it sails well wide and high into the cop behind Allison, who quickly gets one of the, the disinfected balls off the uh, off the training cone behind his goal and takes a quick goal kick and somebody appears from one of the exits in the cup to uh, rescue the original match ball Mane, nice flick, back heel flick into the path of Firmino curls it goalwards but Hennessy goes down and makes a, a routine save down to his left yeah, as soon as he shaped his body to try and bend it round Hennessy right foot, Firmino Hennessy was down very, very quickly it wasn't particularly well struck I bet Trent Alexander-Arnold's delighted that Mr Zaha has disappeared yes, I bet he is be a good contest that but we're not Very. going to, we're not no, going we're to not. see it tonight unfortunately and uh, and he looked as though he was in the mood Zaha with that, that earlier pass that he sent through but uh, but that's the end of that nil nil and the ball back with Hennessy Firmino with the the chance there if you remember he he did score in the last match here having not scored at Anfield for a long long time and uh, that proved to be the ill-fated night that Atletico Madrid came back and won after extra time. Ball downfield for Palace. Here's Maya into the game for the first time. The German international, fair head. Quite a small figure, turns, gives the ball infield to MacArthur, who goes back towards the halfway line to Sacco, who will give it to his right to Gary Cahill. And now Sacco shapes his pass forward towards MacArthur. And then uh, on the left hand side, Kuyate has appeared over there. And Palace go back into their own half. Extremely well drilled when they're in possession. Roy Hodgson's team. Ball down the left. This is for Kuyate to chase. And he can't keep it in. Rather surprisingly, it bounces away from him. And it's a I think kick. he was caught in two minds, wasn't he? I think at one stage he was going to swivel and hit it into the stands. And they pressed Liverpool in their own half. And when they started to make his mind up, the ball went completely out of play. The thing about Sacco is he slaps the ball, doesn't he? He doesn't strike it. And his control is never great. He, look, he looks like he's got massive feet as well. I mean, the, the orange boots and the yellow boots don't particularly help, but he just looks like his feet are too big for his body. Here's Van Dijk, who looks perfectly proportioned at all times. Alexander-Arnold sprays a pass from right to left. They love that, the two full-backs to Robertson. Robertson then with a dart towards the edge of the box. Firmino comes across. That's dealt with well by Crystal Palace, Kuyate. Back in there with Cahill. I think unlike a lot of teams that come here, John, um, Roy Hodgson's definitely got a plan in terms of stopping the two full-backs. The number of teams you see have come here and just sort of try and take Liverpool on at times and the, the full-backs end up just destroying them. Liverpool in possession inside the Crystal Palace half. Still nil-nil. The, uh, the chances so far have all been Liverpool's. Henderson and Wijnaldum with shots over and wide and the shot from Firmino that was saved by Hennessy who's returned to the Crystal Palace goalkeeping position tonight with Guaita injured Liverpool, Alexander Arnold's ball in it's headed back across by Firmino but Palace are able to clear away comes out to Fabinho and a little header down from him to Van Dijk who decides to have a little foray forward into Crystal Palace territory but it breaks down for Liverpool on the edge of the Palace box and will be cleared away by Cahill aerially towards Ayu, who was challenged by Fabinho. I'm not sure there was anything in that, and neither does Martin Atkinson, the no. referee. Ayu no. went down, and he was looking for it, and Martin Atkinson wasn't being fooled. Here's Fabinho again to Alexander-Arnold. Now out to the right-hand side, Henderson's taken up a position there. Back it comes to Alexander-Arnold. Palace have got everyone apart from Ayu back behind the ball, and as I say that, Ayu is also now back behind the ball see Roy Hodgson and Ray Lewington what a good combination they are together standing just a few yards apart on the edge of the coaching area as Van Dijk spreads a pass to the right hand side to Salah Salah now moving in from the right to the left 
and then lifting a ball but that's over the top oh. of Firmino brilliantly pulls it down however plucks it out of the air with his right foot then it ricochets to Wijnaldum Wijnaldum taking on Kuyate. good work from Kuyate, and then a flick forward and Palace could be off on the counter-attack here with Townsend Townsend playing it in field or straight into the path of Van Dijk he was trying to find Ayu Robertson then fought into the box Wijnaldum lifting the ball across goal and Hennessy lost his bearings there for a moment it took a deflection which uh, meant that it was spinning in the air and Hennessy in the end watching it very carefully ended up falling into the back of his net yeah and he, the, it's a corner well he wasn't quite sure where his goal was was he I think I think there lies the problem certainly one, one of the things about Liverpool you know when you just watch them play is when the ball's on the left whoever plays on the right hand side for Liverpool literally is on the diagonal and he's stood on the line at the far you know miles and miles and miles away and it's it works every single time yeah Hennessy there I know as a tall man it's difficult to be graceful when you're off balance here's the corner played in and it's headed away on the edge of the six yard box MacArthur turns and clears it away to Maya but then it comes back from Robertson to the edge of the area Sacco with a header away challenge on Van Dijk it was a nudge really as much as anything else uh, Crystal Palace aren't very happy about this but it's a Liverpool free kick and it is in a very good position, just slightly right of centre. It was Ayu who put in the challenge on Van Dijk. That wasn't an enormous amount. Two threes and a six, was yeah. it not? Van Dijk knew it was coming, so he just kind of shaped his body, didn't he? So he once, once, once there was contact, he was going down. He was always getting the free kick, and it was right under the nose of the referee. It was debatable. It was. It's in a great position, this is, in terms of the taker, because it's right in the middle of the goals. So, where do you set your wall? All those kind of things come into account. And there's, what are there? Six players around the ball, I think, aren't there? Five. Well, Alexan Alexander Arnold looks to be the favourite. Well, he had, a, he had about half a dozen of these on, on Sunday, didn't he? He did. And um, Henderson's talking to him. Or it could be one of those little tapped affairs because Salah is there yeah. as well, just to create the angle. It is, it is very central. And, um, and Palace have got a five-man wall, could be a six-man wall. Mm. Liverpool have put three men a yard in front, obviously, in front of the wall. Massive gap to the goalkeeper's left as we look. Okay. Massive gap. Salah to the right, Alexander-Arnold to the left. Alexander-Arnold curls it in, finds the gap. Round the wall and inside the post. Well, that was an open invitation for Trent Alexander-Arnold. And with his right foot, he said, thank you very much. And it's Liverpool 1, Crystal Palace nil. It didn't have to be a brilliant free kick. As the first thing was that he got it over the wall, which obviously it was extremely important. But it, but it went in probably a foot or two away from the, from the goalpost. And it's just a nice, easy strike. And he wasn't trying to hit it too hard. And... I'm not quite sure the goalkeeper's position because it, we said straight away it's, it's in the middle. So if, if you're going to stand at one side of the goalkeeper, it's an awful lot of yards you've got to make up to make the save. And that is the midway point of the first half. It's the second time I've seen this happen. I saw it happen at Manchester City the other night where, where City scored and then it was a drinks break. So uh, I said to Pat Nevin the other evening, it's a new phrase for football, Mark. Great time to score yeah. just before the drinks break. Yeah. Mind you, City seemed to score every other ten minutes anyway, so it made a great difference, did it? It did not. I think it was about a foot inside, wasn't it? Inside the post. Hennessy was standing to his right. Yeah. And but I you mean, could see straight away, couldn't you? You could see that it was just a massive gap. It was almost an invitation. I think from way up here as well, where we sit at Anfield, I think maybe it's all the more obvious when, as we're looking yes. down on it. Oh, it's completely different when, you d when you're down there. You, obviously, you don't, you don't see how open it is. And um, It was a very well-taken free kick. It wasn't brilliant. It didn't need to be. So Liverpool in front. If Liverpool win tonight, they will be within two points of being confirmed as the champions, and they've got their noses in front. And Liverpool, with this brilliant home record in the Premier League this season, have won, won 15 out of 15. Actually, they've won a, a top-flight record, 22 consecutive home league matches. 22 home wins in a row in the no, league. It's stunning, isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah. And OK, you know, they, lo they lost the last time they played here, after extra time, against Atletico Madrid, and... and you know, they did stutter before the, uh, the shutdown and 
weren't at their best on Sunday. But no. um, Jurgen Klopp has put out the strongest team tonight and they've got an early-ish goal. And what a, what a night for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Zaha limps off after playing against him for 10 minutes. He gets, gets a free kick and scores. His third goal of this season. He's very adept at a free kick, as we know. There's an offside flag against Crystal Palace. The other goals that he scored this season, he, an absolute belter, I remember, at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge when Liverpool won 2-1 there and scored in the 4-0 against Leicester, which is one of Liverpool's best performances of the season. Around about Christmas time, that. And uh, Liverpool looking to get back into their stride. I think particularly so. I sensed that from Jurgen Klopp yesterday after seeing Manchester City play so well in their first two matches back. And uh, Liverpool suddenly straight onto the front foot, having taken the lead in this match with 25 minutes played. Ball with Mane on the left hand side, clips it forward. Cahill comes across and uh, and wins a throw in near the corner flag. So consequently, as well, looking at it from a Crystal Palace point of view, the first goal that they've conceded in five matches. Yeah, and I think is also John that you know when you're in the dressing room down downstairs, and as a player you look around. And straight away you work out this is our best team you know straight away you're filled with confidence aren't you yeah i think that despite the the much bigger squads particularly amongst the uh, the top teams now and the strength and depth you know that's still a, that's still a great thing isn't it in football when you can say that yeah ball out for a throw robertson is going to take it just in front of jürgen klopp clapping his hands black baseball cap on tonight white trainers Ball to the right-hand side, here's Salah, Mohamed Salah. He did look a little frustrated not to get into the action, having sat on the uh, or on one of the substitute seats, shall we say, as opposed to the bench. He looked miffed, didn't he, on Sunday? He did. Robertson now, left side, plays the ball back to the edge of the area, comes back to Robertson from Wijnaldum, who's caught there by Kuyate. It's just a little over-exuberant. The big man, number eight, from a West Ham midfielder. What have you spotted? Guess who's trotting across? to take it oh look it's <laughs> alexander arnold <laughs> kel surprise well if he goes for goal here this is the left corner of the penalty area robertson's there as well that would be an outswinger and uh, henderson arrives near the penalty spot wijnaldum is there as well and van dyke so here it is alexander arnold flicks a foot on it robertson plays it in oh hennessy that's a poor punch henderson shoots it hits the post bounces back off van dyke and is scrambled behind for a corner well it came to henderson i think didn't it who, who struck it he actually struck it really really well then crystal palace at the back just seemed to be surprised by the fact that the ball came back at them because defensively they were poor poor punch from hennessy as well yeah it wasn't that? good really he, he, that lack conviction big style and uh, he landed it right at the feet of Henderson here's the corner into the back post and it's headed up and over he was in a he was in a Crystal Palace sandwich there Virgil van Dijk and he couldn't get it on target could only head yeah. it a yard over his head seemed to be down a little bit when he made contact didn't he? it's a, a real sticky 10 or 15 minutes here for Crystal Palace with Zaha going off and conceding the goal and they look a little bit shaky at the moment yep but uh, even without an Anfield crowd here backing the home team to come here where Liverpool have been so dominant 55 home Premier League matches since they lost which is uh, an extraordinary run yeah and it's the you know this is the foundation of what will be the the win in the Premier League this sure. season whenever it comes sure here is Gomez playing a long pass forward for Mane, but it just bounces through, just skips off the turf through to goalkeeper Hennessy, who's able to come out and claim it. And I would argue as the away team tonight, Crystal Palace, it's nowhere near as daunting without a crowd here, is it? Nowhere near. No, well, I mean, it can't be. No. Hennessy plays it downfield, Gomez gets his head to that on the halfway line. Almost half an hour played, Liverpool 1-0 up. Alexander-Arnold's free kick. He was invited to curl it into the goal, and he did exactly that. From a central position, probably 22 yards out, something like that. Bent it round the wall and a, and a foot inside the post. And uh, the diving Hennessy making ground to his left couldn't get anywhere near it. Just look, look how wide Marnie is and look how wide Salah is, John. It's, it, they, they don't half like 
stretch the game and the pitch out. That's, that's why it's so difficult for teams. Here you go. Ball sprayed out towards the right-hand side to Salah, who gets it down. In, in, possibly in two minds there about what to do, and in the end, just knocked the ball forward and Palace were able to clear it through Sacco. Are you on the halfway line? Turns away from Gomez, but the cover's there from Alexander-Arnold, and he was able to see it back to Alisson. I've not, I've not seen a team, certainly throughout Europe in the Premier League, that, that plays so many diagonal balls. Firmino now into the penalty area, but Ward comes in with a challenge, and just as he was thinking about maybe having a shot across goal, Ward was able to just put a foot in, and the ball bounced away from him. Liverpool lead and Crystal Palace by one goal to nil, BBC Radio 5 Live, live from Anfield. The floodlights are on, but it's a beautiful summer evening. Beautiful summer evening for Premier League football. Here's Gomez now to the right-hand side to Henderson. Henderson, who's seen that shot hit the post, and it bounced back. Could have gone anywhere. It hit Van Dijk, actually, who was inside the penalty area for the set piece, and then was knocked behind for a corner. So it could easily be two goals for Liverpool, but they'll take the one that they've got, Henderson weaving a path from right to left and then turning and curling a high ball out towards the right-hand side Alexander-Arnold now Alexander-Arnold runs into a couple of Crystal Palace players and Van Anhold passes it forward but Ayu can't take that in his stride and Liverpool have got it back and Van Dijk gives it to Wijnaldum now here's Robertson on the left-hand side Robertson back in field to Wijnaldum and then Fabinho and then back again towards Van Dijk, Jurgen Klopp standing and gesticulating, pointing out towards the far side. I think he wants the movement a little quicker from Liverpool. Henderson there to Alexander-Arnold on the right. Alexander-Arnold's ball across, it's gone a long way, it is cleared, comes out to Robertson. And then Robertson gave it to Fabinho and Ayu in with a challenge, has fouled Fabinho. It's a free kick and remember it was Ayu who conceded the free kick on Van Dijk which led to the opening goal. This is about three yards further out. Yeah. He definitely caught him, he's complaining that he didn't. I just saw the replay, he's caught him back of the knee, I think, but... What did he say it was, about three yards further out? I think so, maybe not even that. This is interesting, isn't it? If, if, you're, if you're Alexander Arnold, obviously you want to take it again, what do you do? Do you go for the double bluff? Or do you think, you know what, I'm going to stick it in the same place and see what the goalkeeper does? Well, incredibly... It, oh no, hang on, Hennessy has lined it up on his right post, now he's ah. taken up a position on his left post. <laughs> if at first and all that. <laughs> yes. So, free kick is going to be taken by Fabinho, who went for the other corner. Get him but off it. Over Get the wall. It. <laughs> over the wall and over the bar. Sack him. By a well, good six yards. Well, we definitely know he's taking the next one, don't we? Without question. So, um... It's a goal kick to Crystal Palace. Just uh, interesting, isn't it? The goalkeeper just suddenly decided, no, I'd better go to the other side. I wonder why I didn't think of that in the first place. Yeah, yes. Although you're absolutely right, though. Who was it who said it's the, what is it, the first sign of making the same mistake over and over again? Who said that again? No we'll, idea. We'll, we'll look that up later. There'll be people shouting out at their radios. And, That's uh, before we started. Yes, yes, Townsend getting the ball back now on the right-hand side. Townsend taking it round Robertson, uh, couldn't keep the ball in, and it's a throw into Liverpool, halfway inside their own half. And we've seen, since Zaha went off, since Zaha had to go off injured, we've seen next to nothing of Crystal Palace in an attacking sense. What have you spotted? Knight of the Realm. Ah, Sir Kenny. Sir Kenneth, is, yeah. Is, uh, was he, did he appear on your television screen, did he? He did. So, he is in the director's box. He's with his red mask on. I see. Mm. LFC mask. Oh, yes. Liverpool leading by one goal to nil. And uh, Robertson with the ball on the left-hand side. Back towards Van Dijk. And then Gomez. Gomez in the centre circle. There's that wide player again, is it? Is Alexander. that Henderson on the right now? Yeah, yeah. There's always somebody there. Mm. So clever. This time it's Robertson on the left-hand side, but Ward comes across and is able to head it out of play. And actually, uh, Minamino there, one of the substitutes, picks the ball up from the cone and gives it to Robertson, who takes the throw. Wijnaldum keeps it in. Challenge comes in from MacArthur. 
and uh, touches the ball out of play for a Liverpool throw, which Robertson takes quickly. Gomez uh, just forward of the centre circle, curls the ball beyond Maya to Salah. Salah's quick pass into the edge of the penalty area. Firmino tries to flake. There are shouts for a handball there. It was hooked against Cahill. It bounces down. We'll see if VAR are going to get involved in this. Certainly heard lots of shouts from the players out on the field for handball. Robertson now to the left hand side to Wijnaldum and then back again as Liverpool start once more from the uh, halfway line. Salah, this time the man out wide on the right hand side is Henderson. Salah in a more deep lying position, his cross field ball low is onto the head of Ward who heads it away from Palace, Van Dijk then heads it to Salah on the edge of the area who tried to knock it back actually rather than taking it on and Palace cleared it. You better check his temperature. I can't believe he didn't. I can't believe he didn't take it on and try and score. Don't worry, he'll have <laughs> had his temperature checked. Oh yeah. Did you see what yours was today? Thirty-six something. He says mine yeah. was thirty-five something today. I'm extremely ignorant. I don't really know what it means. I mean, I'd, well, I it's got to be below. Was All right. it thirty-seven. I, I had run from the car park. <laughs> yes. Robertson swinging the pull in, left-footed. That's headed away by Sacco for Palace. Liverpool are winning 1-0. And then uh, Alexander-Arnold playing it forward. Maya couldn't clear. Fabinho, now Salah. Salah against Van Aanholt. Back to Alexander-Arnold. His ball in. Firmino was challenged by Ward. Firmino went down. Ball still in the area. Mane, Mane to Wijnaldum. And Wijnaldum curls it narrowly wide. And it was a clumsy... Yeah. sort of shot from Wijnaldum yeah I think I think he wanted it a little bit more to his right and in the end it, it sort of came between his two feet and he scuffed it didn't he with his with, with his right can you remember the last time Palace had the ball in Liverpool's half I certainly can't well I mean since Zaha went off it's uh, it's been it's been all Liverpool mm. and uh, that could have been a goal Henderson's hit the yeah. post yeah Firmino's had a chance I mean, for a form team, for Crystal Palace, admittedly, you know, Roy Hodgson's had to make a couple of changes. Yeah, he's, very, he's lost his best player, hasn't he? Yeah, and losing Zaha since the start of the game. It's, um, things have conspired against Roy Hodgson down there. 72 years old now, 73 in August. And he signed a, a contract in March to go next season as well. And uh, with Palace in the position that they're in, why wouldn't you? They're in a uh, very, very comfortable position in, yeah. the, in the Premier League and, as I've already suggested, very much looking up. You, you know your club and your team's in very safe hands, don't you? Yeah. Here's Firmino, rides the challenge from Kuyate. Mane, nice touch from him. 25 yards out, Salah gives it to Henderson. Henderson now clips it to the right-hand side to Alexander-Arnold and back to Salah. Salah now moving in field little ball to the edge of the area to Firmino but uh, that breaks down Palace there in numbers and it's just passed forward w way beyond Ayu and that just gives mm. possession back to Liverpool well in fairness to Ayu he's trying to get he's trying to get Liverpool's half but he was some 15 yards away from the halfway line Th this is their difficulty really is you know they, they can't get enough of the ball to play into Ayu for him to hold the ball up to bring the rest of the team into play and consequently it's like playing against the wall the ball just keeps coming back to Palace and with Palace one nil down we're in a portion of the game here really where Palace are looking to stay in the match yes and then you know maybe later in the game nick something yeah here's Gomez Gomez oh Salah will do well to keep that in back pedaling got his head to it and did keep it in but presented it to Van Anholt, who very helpfully has got a peroxide wash to his hair, which uh, is an achievement in itself, I would have thought, during lockdown. Cahill, back to Hennessy. Probably self-administered. Is that wise? Uh, probably not. Yeah. But he is a footballer. <laughs> As somebody said to me last week, it must be remarkable the number of footballers who live with hairdressers. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Van Anholt playing the ball back into his own half. MacArthur is being put under pressure by Henderson. And he's able to, MacArthur, play it away to comparative safety here on the right-hand side, where Townsend's into the action. 
Townsend, he's not, he certainly doesn't live with a, a hairdresser. Townsend's hair's just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Maya, that's a good ball. Maya looking for Van Anholt, but Alexander Arnold was able to deal with it, gives it back to Allison, who coolly chips it back past Van Anholt out to Alexander Arnold, who almost lost it to Maya. Henderson, and then Alexander Arnold does lose it, and Palace have got it back, but only briefly before Liverpool are able to smuggle possession of the ball back and Henderson's come out of his penalty area heads it down he's headed it to Salah who's going for goal from distance but couldn't get the shot on target and it bounces wide from 40 yards wow well first and foremost Salah just sliced it didn't he in his, in his hurry to try and dink the goalkeeper but I'm not sure what the goalkeeper's doing there he, he doesn't need to come that far well there was a, a defender there he yeah. came out of his penalty area it reminded me of many years ago when a certain B. Grovelar used to come running out past you on a regular basis. Yes, that would get the that would get the temperature up. <laughs> Henderson playing the ball forward down the right hand side. Salah, Salah up against Sacco plays it back to Henderson. Flick from him back towards the halfway line. Five minutes to go to half time here at behind closed doors Anfield. And Liverpool leading through Trent Alexander-Arnold's well-taken free kick. He dispatched it well into the uh, the inviting gap, I think would be the phrase, that had been left for him. Round the wall. Oh, that's, that's a missed kick from Kuyate, and he's, done, he's been very fortunate in his missed kick, found are you? And uh, Palace have it inside their own half. Again, if you just joined our coverage tonight, you may have noticed a slight difference this evening in that uh, on Five Live for our Premier League commentaries now, and this is the plan from this point on, you will hear a little crowd, artificial crowd noise behind the commentary. Maya bringing the ball forward for Palace. Maya shoots, and he flashes it wide by a couple of yards. It opened up there for Maya. Yeah, it's a poor header, misplaced header by Joe Gomez, wasn't it? Right into the middle of the pitch, which enabled Maya to have the opportunity and the very least should have hit the target because he was under no great pressure. That was a chance to equalise, four minutes to half time. And, uh, and the commentary, this commentary is uh, on Five Live Sports Extra without the crowd noise. So do tell us what you prefer, what you think, and you can get in touch uh, Five Live's social media. What do you think? Five Live. What do I think? I uh, I do prefer it without the crowd noise, frankly, but I know it's, it's something that does divide opinion. We've been talking about it an awful lot over the course of the last few weeks or so. So uh, I've, ch I've come full circle, actually. I um, have, have turned against the crowd noise. Here's, yeah, I don't mind it, actually. Yeah, I like it on the... I, I don't mind it on the television, but uh, as I was saying the other evening, what turned me against it was when I was watching the West Ham match and the Bournemouth match at the weekend. Right. And I just thought, this crowd noise just sound totally wrong, you know, when, when the home teams were losing. Anyway... Yeah, well, at West Ham, they'd be moaning normally, well, uh, wouldn't they? Exactly, yeah. Here's Van Anholt in field. Anyway, you can have your debate on social media on that. Here's MacArthur, here's Van Anholt, now on the left-hand side. Liverpool leading 1-0. Van Anholt, and back to Sacco inside his own half. And uh, Gary Cahill, Cahill thought about the long pass, 34 years old now, Gary Cahill. And uh, Cahill receiving the ball again, and with Firmino and Mane not far away, he turns and gives it back to goalkeeper Hennessy, who finds Ward. But Wijnaldum was there with him, and the ball bounces down for Liverpool to play it back to Allison on the edge of the area. Thing is, John, as far as Palace are concerned, they're not really in the game. But at, but at one nil, of course, you know, just just need that whatever it be, set piece, free kick, corner, whatever, and to pinch a goal. Yep. But uh, losing Zaha after 15 minutes was uh, no. was a big setback. No. Half time on Five Live. We'll hear more on the earlier games. The good win for Manchester United. Martial with a hat trick. Fabinho lifting the ball over the top. Salas under this, beats the defender and plants it in the net. It's 2 0. And Mohamed Salah is back for Liverpool with a goal. And Liverpool now in control just before half time. Liverpool inching ever closer to that Premier League title. 2 0 against Crystal Palace here. Well, Van Arnholt was tracking Mo Salah, and I'm not quite sure what happened to him, whether he slipped or not. Salah was definitely on, that's the first thing, and he out-sprinted Van Arnold basically, and Van Arnold fell over, and it just gave Saka a split second, look at the goalkeeper, judge where he was, what he was doing, and it was quite easily the simplest of tasks, just to tuck it past him 2-0. Yeah, Van Arnold knew he'd been beaten by the pass from Fabinho, he, it was over his head, 
he had a vain lunge for it to try and get his head to it. Salah in behind him just chested it down and popped it past Hennessy as he came yeah. out with his left foot. Basically, Salah reacted quicker than Van Arnold because Van Arnold was in, in his starting position was actually OK. He was in front of Salah. So there we are, Salah who sat it out at Goodison Park on Sunday. So his first match back and he's on the score sheet having actually scored in his last Premier League appearance. The, uh, the home win against Bournemouth here. Sacco, Sacco in a bit of trouble on the edge of his own penalty area, stumbling and falling, but just about able to dig the ball out and clear it. So 2-0 to Liverpool, and uh, Liverpool have Palace now exactly where they want them. It'll be really intriguing going into that Palace dressing room at half-time and listen to what Roy Hodgson says to them. Mm. Well, he's standing there. With his hand on his chin, Mute, Roy Hodgson. Muted. Yeah. Mane now, away down the left-hand side, Mane plays the ball forward. And this will be a, this will be quite a relief, I would have thought, for Liverpool and all of their supporters listening and watching on, wherever they are, around the country, around Merseyside, around the world, just wondering, in this brilliant home record, how Liverpool would fare without a crowd at Anfield. But uh, really... It's uh, this performance is, it could easily have been a Liverpool performance this season in front of a crowd here in this yeah, stadium. Yeah, they're just in complete and utter control, aren't they? Van Dijk sending a ball to Robertson, who just backed away and it, it bounced to Ward, and now Townsend's back there as well, turning and clearing it up the line. Glance on by Kuyate. Are you now has Van Dijk there with him? He's beaten Van Dijk, turned, beat him, but there was cover there with Wijnaldum, so Ayu has to go back into his own half and then finds McCarthy. McCarthy, little foray forward, but then angles the pass back to Sacco, and now here's Van Anholt, who was caught out by Salah for the second Liverpool goal. Maya, now back to the halfway line to McCarthy. And uh, we're in added time at the end of the first half. Mike Dean's the fourth official down there in his white mask. His beard might be a little kickily underneath the uh, the mask his new beard Mike Dean uh, but he's uh, indicated how many minutes there are and um, looking at all the various screens and things I can't see it anywhere so I'm guessing it's two or three the ball's yeah, no. back with Robertson I we've, never saw it we've already had uh, two minutes are almost up Liverpool playing it out from the back and since Martin Atkinson isn't putting his whistle to his mouth, I presume it's three minutes that were added on. We did have the injury to Zaha. He's just checked his watch now. Here we uh, go. Uh, so it was two minutes. And uh, there we are, half-time. Roy Hodgson just turns away, puts his hand to his forehead rather theatrically mm. as he walks away down the tunnel. And Liverpool in control, leading 2-0 with the free kick, the goal from Alexander-Arnold midway through the half, and then Salah taking advantage of uh, Van Anholt's uncertainty to score what is his 21st goal of the season and his 17th in the Premier League and it's 2-0 Mark Lawrenson yeah and to be quite honest with you it could be 3-4 and not be on the realms of possibility with the chances they've had at the post etc and it's very very difficult to see what Palace can do certainly in the, in the second half lost the best players Zaha after 15 minutes or so and at the moment with no crowd it actually looks like a training game it does just looking here as well in the uh in the Premier League top scorer stakes. That means Salah is now into second, joint second with Aubameyang on 17. Uh, Vardy leading the way with 19. So half time here at Anfield on this beautiful evening. Liverpool in complete control, 2 0 up. And it looks as though by the end of the night they're going to be within two points of being confirmed as the champions. 85058 at 5 Live Sport. Ahmed says Liverpool's counter press is just so fast, so aggressive. Palace don't have a chance. Uh, Rory, boom! There's the century of goals. Liverpool have now scored 100 goals in all competitions this season, Mark Lawrenson. But I tell you what, number 99 takes some beating. What, from Alexander Arnold? Yeah. Wow, the goalkeeper's massively at fault, Steve. It, it's just stood on the. the on the wrong side of the wall. But the problem is, once a free kick is in the middle of the goal, you have to make that decision about how far you can actually leave if you've got to run across the goal to make the save. 
you know, and I always, I always think they're almost better actually standing in the middle. And if it goes either side of them, they've not got as much distance to cover. Don't get me wrong, it was beautifully taken. But I mean, we shouted straight away here, look, look at the gap. And mm. not only looked at the gap, he stuck it in the gap. Brilliant free kick from Alexander Arnold. That was Liverpool's first. Salah got the second. We'll be back with Mark Lawrence and John Murray for second half commentary from Anfield. Liverpool two. Crystal Palace nil. Very convincing so far from Liverpool. Very dominant. It was much closer in the Battle of the Brits. It was Andy Murray against Kyle Edmund earlier on and Russell Fuller was watching. A match of three tie breaks, Steve, which Kyle Edmund just shaded. Murray took the first set 7-2 on the tiebreak. Edmund the second 7-5. The third set played over a 10-point tiebreak. Won by Edmund by 10 points to 5. Naomi Cavaday was commentating with me on the BBC Sport website. We've just heard actually from Andy Murray, Naomi post-match, who was actually very pleased with the way he played and says that if he carries on in that vein with time, he thinks he'll be playing high-level tennis again fairly soon. What did you make of both players? All right, I thought it was a fantastic performance from Andy Murray. He absolutely stepped up from his match yesterday. He looked a lot more comfortable on the ball. He has said himself he hasn't done the most amount of practice through lockdown. So he's really just trying to take steps in the right direction. And he had to up his game against Kyle Edmund because we know Kyle is in the top 50. He is playing at a really high level. And actually, for the most part, that match really was played at a very good level. I know Edmund wasn't entirely happy that he didn't manage to play as well well as he did yesterday his level dipped a little bit but still I mean all things considered I thought it was an excellent performance all round and it was just oh so close and I think both players have every reason to be positive. And so we know that from the Tim Henman group with two wins out of two Carl Edmund is the first singles player through to the semi-finals. Liam Brody has lost both his matches has been eliminated and it means that Andy Murray against James Ward is a straight shootout for the second berth in the semi-finals from that group and that will be online bbc sport website at around about six o'clock tomorrow evening lovely stuff thank you very much guys still to come on five live sport this evening we've got second half commentary of liverpool against crystal palace actually steve kerr the the basketball legend who is in the last dance has just been tweeting about that brilliant trent alexander arnold free kick uh, that was got the, got liverpool the first salah got them the second we're going to get reaction to wins shortly for manchester united everton wolves and to newcastle's draw with aston villa at st james's park we'll do that after the latest news with anna hodges on digital, BBC Sounds, smart speaker and online. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Clinical trials of a new coronavirus vaccine have started in London. Scientists at Imperial College say if it's successful, it could give enough doses to immunise 40 million people in Britain by the middle of next year. 300 people are taking part in the trials. Professor Peter Openshaw is from Imperial College. If it's a virus which is only sort of hanging on by its fingernails in terms of its epidemiology, then a less effective vaccine, a lower level of community immunity can be enough to reduce transmission. So, you know, we're all hoping that this is going to be really highly effective, but it's going to need several doses. We also need to see what sort of dose is necessary. Unions are criticising the government's guidelines for pubs, restaurants and other businesses reopening in England early next month. The GMB says the plans are not fit for purpose. Plans have been set out to relax the lockdown in Scotland. They include the reopening of beer gardens and self-contained holiday homes on the 6th of July. New York and the neighbouring states of New Jersey and Connecticut are starting a two-week quarantine period for visitors from nine other states with high rates of infection. The New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says the new rules will come into effect at midnight. It's only for the simple reason that uh, we worked very hard to get the viral transmission rate down. We don't want to see it go up because a lot of people come into this region and they could literally bring the infection with them. It wouldn't be malicious or malevolent, but it would still be real. One of the largest companies in the British aviation industry, Swissport UK, is going to cut more than half of its workforce. The airport ground handling firm is to lose more than 4,000 jobs because of the damage done to air travel by the pandemic. And today is officially the hottest day of the year so far. The Met Office says the temperature hit 32.6 Celsius at Heathrow Airport. Having had seven championship points, Borg, he now has two more. This famous old centre court could be about to go crazy. 
Murray serves. Returns on the backhand. Up goes the lob. Brilliant on the volley. Forehand down the line. Grabs underneath it for the smash. Back and return. Oh, this just extraordinary from Novak Djokovic. Jana Novotna slumps to her knees. Serena Williams collapses on her back. Jack has written himself into the Wimbledon history books. Rewind to some of the best matches from the Wimbledon Championship. Starts on Monday at 1.30 on BBC Two and iPlayer. A Wimbledon classic, you better believe it. This is Five Live Sport with Steve Crossman. Back to Anfield for second half commentary shortly. We're going to get some reaction to the earlier kickoffs in the Premier League now. Anthony Martial scored a hat trick for Manchester United. He got all three of their goals in their victory over Sheffield United. Finished 3-0. Here's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I'm very pleased with the clean sheet, attitude of everyone. We should have scored more goals. So we, we do create so many chances and opportunities to create chances. So... A part of me is a bit disappointed we didn't score more, but of course, a hat-trick from Anthony we're, and we're uh, back on the winning trail. His first hat-trick for the club, in fact, the first hat-trick by anybody in a Manchester United shirt in the Premier League for seven years. That's quite too a long. remarkable <laughs> statistic. Uh, way too long. And of course, we, we know that we've had games this season, we should have scored more. And that's one of my, maybe one of the few criticisms I can give the boys today, that we should do better. We have opportunities to play the final pass, the spaces, the great runs. We're one-on-one with the keeper, score. Uh, so we'll keep on working and being more clinical. And just finally a word about Paul Pogba, his first start since September the 1st. How do you think he fared today? Yeah, as you expect, he's a top player, uh, gets on the ball, uh, makes us tick, uh, plays some great passes, shows some good skill and uh, gradually we'll get him fitter and fitter and better and better. Newcastle drew one all with Aston Villa earlier. Ahmed El Mohamedi with a goal which could prove to be vital in Villa's relegation fight. They're now level on points with Bournemouth in 18th and West Ham in 17th. Newcastle 13, 39 points. Look perfectly safe. Here's their manager, Steve Bruce. The disappointing and frustration thing for us is that after getting in front and not seeing it through because of the one thing that we have been good at is seeing it through. And to give a poor goal away like we've done, you know, we'll analyse that again, but. It was an awfully poor, soft goal, and that's the frustration because you know we haven't hit the heights as what we did at the weekend, but we had, had a great chance of winning the match and uh, didn't see it through. Just a thought on Villa. Of course, you spent time there as manager. I know you've got a lot of respect for Dean Smith. Yep. Do you think they've got enough there to survive this season? There's so fine margins, so fine margins in, in the Premier League. So I wish them the best of luck. It's going to be tough. They've got a, a, an awful... Awful fixture list by the by the look of it on paper, but they've got some good players, so we'll see. Steve Bruce with Gary Flint off there. It will be tough for Dean Smith. Here he is. I thought first off we were the better team, created a, you know, a number of chances that we have to be more clinical and take. You know, uh, Trezor's missed the one at the far post, Ali's missed a header coming back across, John McGinn's missed a header as well. You know, I thought we were on top and getting good balls into the box in behind them and and uh, arriving, but we hadn't got that, you know, that killer first goal. And uh, I thought Newcastle then started the second half the better and scored just as I was making a substitution. And uh, I didn't actually see, I've just looked back now and Esri Konza goes to sleep. And I spoke to him because it's something that, you know, we have to, you make a mistake like that and go to sleep. You, and it's something we spoke about three hours ago on, on the video analysis. So, you know, it makes it even more frustrating. But he's a young lad and he, he'll learn. You know, the lad whose place he's taken at the moment has gone and saved him, saved him and, and gone and got a good goal for him. You know, well worked set piece from Conor Hurihan that he's known for. Do you believe if you produce this kind of performance between now and the end of the season, that will keep you in the Premier League? I do believe, yeah. I mean, we had 10 games to go. We've got seven left now. Um, and our performance levels are, are getting there. Defensively, I think we've put to bed the big chances that we kept conceding. I'm saying that, but we give a soft one for the goal today. We're, it's from a throw-in something, and that's one, one moment of a lack of concentration. But we're getting there. Yeah, they could have got three points. They only got one, but that's one more than Bournemouth, who lost 1-0 at Wolves. Here's Eddie Howe. It hurts deeply at the moment, the run we're on. The results we've had uh, today, again, was a game that really very few goal mouth action for either team. Um, we could have easily picked up a point today. It didn't happen, and that's been the story of our recent run, really. Yeah, I thought we were below par on the ball today. I thought defensively the lads put a really good effort in. I thought well, our organisation was good, but on the ball counter-attack opportunities didn't really happen we were 
probably more wasteful with the ball the longer the game went on and that, I think that disappoints us because we know we have the quality to be better than that but with the position we're in I said before maybe that's playing a part in our freedom and our ability to play our normal way um, but I, I can't fault the attitude and commitment of the players today I thought it was there um, and hopefully that will will change our fortunes quickly one of the game so far tonight, Norwich City lost 1-0 at home to Everton. So the bottom of the table looks like this. Norwich, 21 points, bottom of the league. Aston Villa, second bottom on 27. Same points as Bournemouth and West Ham in 18th and 17th. Then West Ham, one ahead of them on 28. Uh, Brighton are 15th on 33. Our correspondent, John Murray, is, is with us from Anfield. So you've basically got, John... Three from five now, do you think? I think so, probably. Uh, that's that's the likelihood. Uh, it's it's looking like a really tall order for Norwich now, doesn't it? And uh, the, the, the rest of them are, are, are really concertina together there, aren't they? So um, it, it, uh, that, that could be the point of interest over the course of the last few weeks of the season, I think. Um, Mark Lawrenson, I... I I had to check when I asked you about Trent Alexander-Arnold's goal because I was like, oh, maybe maybe it wasn't as good as I thought. I've seen it again. Go on. I, I don't know. It's a great free kick, isn't it? I think it's good. <laughs> um, no, I do it, but I think it was just... It was just... I just think it's a mistake by the goalkeeper, just, Steve, giving him so much yeah. space. At least... So if he's going to do that, the goalkeeper, maybe maybe be on your toes a little bit, thinking, you know, he might try a cheeky one and stick it in the in the far corner. But um, I just think it was a little bit of misjudgment as well. I'm not being tight on uh, no, Alexander-Arnold. No. It, it was a really good free kick. I just... I, I, I don't think I'd label it great. OK, well, the ultimate irony, uh, John, as, as we hand back to you, is that, you know, we watched uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold have about 10 goes at Goodison Park and couldn't get anywhere near, and then he does that. No, exactly, but um, but I guess that's maybe something he's been working on in training, as they say, after uh, Goodison. So, uh, we're ready for the start of the second half. Liverpool leading Crystal Palace by two goals to nil. Uh, no changes, no further changes at half-time by either manager. So, Liverpool, as they started, with Alisson, Alexander-Arnold, Gomez, Van Dijk and Robertson, Henderson, Fabinho, Wijnaldum, Salah, Firmino and Mane. And Crystal Palace, after they lost... Wilfried Zaha to injury after a quarter of an hour uh, and bringing on Max Meyer for him. Hennessy in goal at the back. Ward, Cahill, Sacco and Van Anholt. Kuyate, McCarthy and MacArthur. And then Townsend, Ayu and substitute Meyer. So as I say, Zaha having to go off injured. Uh, Guaita has a thigh injury, so he's not involved tonight. That's why Wayne Hennessy's playing. And Christian Benteke not involved either. So we're still waiting for Martin Atkinson to get the second half underway. He's just looking at his watch there. The referee blows his whistle and off we go for the second half. Liverpool leading with, through the goals from Trent Alexander-Arnold and Mohamed Salah just before half-time. Salah's 21st goal of the season for Liverpool. And uh, Liverpool in this position, winning the game, are within two points of being confirmed as champions if it stays like this. And in the second half... Liverpool attacking towards the cop that is empty oh. and Alex uh, Robertson plays the ball across from the left-hand side and it is just beyond Salah who was arriving, curled it, beat both defenders in the middle, Sacco and Van Anhold, and Salah just couldn't get there. Well, I think because Saka thought he was going to um, kick it, didn't he? He went to kick it and then he suddenly at the last minute decided not to and I think that just put Salah off. Sacco, I'm saying Saka, Sacco. I think that just put Salah off, didn't it? It did, you know. You can see in the, just watching the replay and the, the, yeah. his body language, he was just pulling out yeah. of it because he thought Sacco was going yeah. to wallop it. I don't think it was meant by Sacco either, but hey. So Liverpool in the, in the red kit with the white numbers on the back against the Crystal Palace in their white kit with the red and blue diagonal stripe across the front this classy Crystal Palace kit and uh, Palace having conceded for the first time in five matches those two goals it's an awfully long way back for them and with the players that are missing Milivojevic is on the bench Dan is on the bench as well I guess that's just part of the rotation of the, the way that the matches are coming Crystal Palace next play 
on the Monday night. Uh, they're at home to Burnley. He has Maya. Maya does well, slips the ball in between Henderson and Alexander Arnold. And now Van Anholt cuts back onto his right foot, plays it up to Maya, but uh, Fabinho is in there. Fabinho it was who set up the second goal that Salah scored. Uh, Henderson then challenged by Van Anholt. I think he was caught by him as well. No free kick. And then Henderson plays the ball away into the Palace half where his former England colleague Gary Cahill is able to check its progress and turn it back towards goalkeeper Hennessy. So 2-0 here behind closed doors Anfield, floodlights are on, clear skies above Anfield, the sun has gone now and uh, Liverpool bringing the ball forward, Salah pulling it down nicely, playing it infield towards Firmino, Firmino now to Mane, edge of the area, onto his right foot, into the D, playing it back to Henderson, right side of the box, Henderson chips it across, half-headed away, and then cleared away, and referee Atkinson has spotted a push on Joel Ward, and it's a free kick to Palace inside yeah. their own area, Mark Lawrenson. Firmino pushed him, he just think, he thought, if I just nudge him, just nudge Ward, and the ball's coming to me, I've got a header some eight yards out, but... Uh, the referee spotted it and this is the thing about the Liverpool team John is that they will just be straight for the throat again here none of this play the ball around nicely and easy and that's this is down to the manager it's come on let's win more goals come on come on yeah go and get it won will be the message and then we'll see what happens between Manchester City at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea tomorrow night which is by no means straightforward and uh, Manchester City I think you could certainly argue that, that City's greater focus might be on the FA Cup tie at Newcastle on Sunday night this week. Yeah, Aguero out as well for a while, isn't yes, he? Yes, that's right. Might not be back this season. He's had a knee operation, actually. Had it already, has he? Yep. OK. That's what he said today. He's had the knee operation. Pep Guardiola said on Monday night that Aguero had felt something in his knee for a little while. And... Um, and then it was obviously aggravated the other evening. As in a little while while they weren't playing, do you think? Well, he, he didn't, didn't specify okay. whether he meant before the shutdown or whether this had been something recent. Since it restarted in terms of training. Yeah. Here's Cahill playing the ball out towards the right-hand side. BBC Five Live, live from Anfield. We've got the, uh, the carpet of crowd noise as well tonight. Tell us what you think. Here's Robertson. Robertson playing the ball back to Mane. Mane twisting but then passing the ball into the path of Van Anholt is a 50-50 Fabinho wins it slides in against Van Anholt now Salah on the right hand side Salah is Liverpool attack towards the cop Salah couldn't find the pass beyond Maya for Henderson so Palace are able to clear up towards Gomez on the halfway line Liverpool with 15 wins out of 15 at home in the Premier League this season but this was a different ball game tonight without the Liverpool fans inside Anfield however it is business as usual in the Premier League at Anfield this season. Indeed, the last time they failed to win at home in the Premier League was the January of last year when they drew 1-1 with Leicester. Since then, they've won every home league game. I think also, John, when you saw that 50-50, Fabinho was never pulling out, was he? No. Henderson, swirling the ball across, took a deflection, cleared away by Townsend at the back post for Palace, comes out to Wijnaldum, and the Dutchman, right-footed, plays it into the area to be headed away by another Dutch international, Van Anholt. And now Ayu is able to take it away. Maya takes it on. Maya plays it ahead of Ayu, who'll do well to reach that. He won't reach that. He runs, looking up at the sky. He's rather like a 100-metre runner who's come in seventh in yeah. the Olympic final and a, a distant seventh. Out of six. Yeah, <laughs> looking towards the heavens, pulling up. Liverpool leading by two goals to nil. Alexander Arnold's free kick, Salah's finish. Looked sharp, actually, Salah. I think uh, all three, mm -hmm. uh, three forward players, which is, which is always your worry after a big layoff, is that extra 5% in terms of your sharpness, which is most important for forward players. Yeah, they've, they've just generally, Liverpool looked... Looked at deal. it, yes. they've looked at it, haven't they? Yeah. And obviously bringing in Salah and uh, Robertson yeah. makes a big difference. As uh, Sacco will just have to be careful here, but he does well, actually allows the ball to run, so that fool... Oh, he turns it back short to Hennessy, who has to be quick, and he was... And Hennessy came out and cleared it just before Firmino got there. It's his feet, isn't it? Unfortunately for a footballer, his feet get in the way. Sacco playing instead of Scott Dan. 
uh, whether whether there is an issue or not with Dan, I don't know, but he is on the bench or is among the substitutes. Actually, what Liverpool have done tonight, and I've not seen any other club do this, they've actually taken out all of the seats behind the dugouts, so there are actually white or just grey concrete steps down there with the substitute seats dotted around in the in that in that area behind the dugouts. As uh, Palace played forward, this is for Maya to chase. If you're watching TV pictures, you'll be able to see them just behind the either side of the tunnel. Those substitute seats, all socially distanced. And uh, Palace still continuing to build inside the Liverpool half. Van Anholt, and now Kuyate. Van Anholt, MacArthur, first time touch. Maya, Maya on his right foot. Fabinho putting in the challenge. Referee Atkinson was right there, says that he got a bit of the ball as well as Maya. No free kick. Liverpool break downfield. Palace haven't made anything of that at all, actually. And now. Andy Robertson to the edge of the area, shooting, but it flies away over the top by uh, probably three or four yards. Yeah, he was just kind of falling away and almost a little bit falling over the ball as he struck it, and uh, it was always going wide, certainly. Actually, the other point we should make again for, uh, for those perhaps who weren't listening in the first half was that the free kick that led to the opening Liverpool goal was debatable. Yeah. I think, you know, Roy Hudson might just make a point of that. Possibly, after but the game. You, you are allowed to defend it, though, after yes. it's... Debatable. Yep. Free uh, goal kick. Roy Hod Hodgson down there clapping his hands. He had uh, one of the most unhappy spells of his great managerial career for those few months that he was the Liverpool manager, which is ten years ago now. As we were saying on Sunday, he was the he was the manager when Everton last beat Liverpool back in 2010. He was fighting fires when he was here in fairness. Mm. That, Martin Broughton was here, wasn't he? I think he was... It was at the time, wasn't it? When the Americans... The, 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 the current owners took over, I think, during the time he was here, wasn't it? That, if I remember rightly? Um, I think that... I think they maybe took over while he was the manager. We'll check that. What was it, not the two of the jokers who were still <laughs> hanging and Gillette, yeah. <laughs> well, they were, I think they were still here. Oh, that's serious. Yes, yeah, yes, and yes. then... And yes. then Fenway Sports Group took sure. over. Here's Firmino playing at square to Wijnaldum. Now to the left-hand side to Robertson. Robertson then turns and plays it back centrally. Fabinho, he's going to have a goal. He has a goal! Oh, oh and it was worth a goal! That is a stunning goal from Fabinho from 35 yards. It flew past Hennessy and it's 3-0 to Liverpool. And they're moving to the brink of the title with this victory over Crystal Palace. But what a goal to set it up from Fabinho. Yeah, lo loads of space, one touch out of his feet. And it went like a rocket, only halfway up the back of the net as well, wasn't it? It was absolutely brilliant strike. It's good missile-ish. Moving away from the goalkeeper all the time. I'd love to know how fast that was travelling. Well, yeah. Not too dissimilar for the uh, Liverpool goal scored against Manchester City, John, here, remember that? Yes. But that one absolutely arrowed past Hennessy. I mean, the contact on it was absolutely per... He, he had time, you know, we should say that. He had time just to take a touch and it, it spun perfectly for him to, to strike it on the surface of the pitch. And it just set off. So it's 3-0 to Liverpool and they're on the way to the victory that will leave them as Townsend has a goal from uh, from 25 yards plus but uh, Fabinho that was not and it's a goal kick to Liverpool no it wasn't and uh, Juliet is just pointing out here yeah that it was the Fenway sports group who were in charge when uh, when Roy Hudson okay. left the club so the, the the two jokers had left had left okay. during the time that he was okay. in charge yeah. 3-0, Liverpool lead. That was that was worth the... Uh... We were going to say the admission money if we'd paid. <laughs> I was going to say, if people had paid admission money, that would have been worth it. Yeah. And that the free, is, uh... the free kick was worth it, it just wasn't great. But uh, that, tops, that tops the free kick. Oh, yes. Most definitely. So uh, Fabinho adds his list, adds his name to the list of scorers here tonight. Fabinho with uh, his second goal of the season and Liverpool looking to add more to it. Alexander-Arnold, left footed ball, they're queuing up at the back post, Mane takes it down, he's up against Ward, plays it across, Wijnaldum oh. shoots straight at Hennessy, 
who grabs the ball gratefully into his green shirt. Yeah, the ball came quick at Wijnaldum. He did really well, actually. One first touch and hit it quickly, I think, probably left foot. But just, uh, I mean, either side of the goalkeeper, it's 4-0, but it was straight at the goalkeeper. A little bit like uh, when I was at Manchester City with Pat Nevin and we were talking about De Bruyne and, and watching him mm. and do his great things. When you see a goal like that, when Fabinho scores a goal like that, you know, it, it's what football is all about. Yeah. To be in a ground and hear the appreciation of supporters when they see one of their players do something like that, score a goal like that. And, and tonight, you know, and for the foreseeable future, we just don't have that. And no, it was a pure strike, wasn't it? Mm. Absolutely. And really, you know, it, it can't come quickly enough. The return of spectators went safe, obviously. That's the, that's the key thing. That's the most important thing. But I was interested. I was talking to your old teammate, Jan Molby, Mark, uh -huh. a little bit earlier on tonight. And he was saying that in Denmark at the weekend, they started to bring supporters back into the, into the uh, grounds. Wow. You know, not many, just, you know, 1,000, 2,000. Trickle, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there have been moves to do that. To, uh, Could you imagine that, that? How do you decide? Well, that's the difficult one. Unless you draw lots. Draw lots. I think that would be the only way you could do it. Yeah. Alexander Arnold sending a ball cross field looking for Robertson's run, but he's overhit this one, Alexander Arnold, and it's through for a goal kick. Liverpool leading Crystal Palace by three goals to nil. We'll have more after the match. Colin Murray's going to join us for the latter part of the programme before he takes over his new midweek show, which starts at half past ten. And uh, here's Salah, just outside the area. Salah slipping it through into the box. Firmino tries to pull it back, but uh, miskicked it, mishit it as he tried to centre it. And uh, Van Anholt was able to step in and Palace clear it away. We should say, by the way, tomorrow night, two more Premier League commentaries on Five Live, another one on Sports Extra. And you will hear Chelsea against Manchester City here on Five Live tomorrow night, same time, 8.15 kickoff. And uh, with this scoreline 3-0, I don't see Palace coming back anytime soon as Alexander-Arnold swirls the ball across but beyond Firmino and it will bounce out of play. Off the corner flag actually on the far side for yeah. the corner. It's too, too high and too strong, was it? I mean, if, if, if Palace thought they were in a little bit of a mess at half-time, I'm not quite sure how they feel now at 3-0 down and I'm looking very sorry for themselves, I'm afraid. Yeah. Roy Hudson, incidentally, didn't name the full allocation of nine substitutes tonight either. There are youngsters on the bench, 18-year-old Pierrick, 21-year-old Terrares, who's never played, Tyrick Mitchell, he would also be a debut if he came on. So it's a thin substitutes bench as well for, uh, for Crystal Palace, and he's only made the one enforced change so far, Roy Hudson. But yes, with this scoreline, Liverpool leading by three goals to nil, it means that the title could be settled tomorrow night if Manchester City fail to win. And you'll hear it here on Five Live. Here's Salah playing the ball forward. Van Anholt dispossessed illegally by Henderson. It's a foul. And Van Anholt is, uh, is on his back, but it's a free kick to Palace inside, uh, inside his own box. So it could be 24 hours, 24 hours mm -hmm. time. It could be, yeah. it could be certain. Yeah. A long time it's coming. Very strange, wasn't it? Very, yeah. Really. Did you the only thing I would say is that even it's what it's one of those things when when you win such a competition and obviously it's a great competition to win because of the number of games and you know the standard of the teams in the Premier League etc etc but it doesn't sink in for a long time John you know the th thing you're missing is obviously the bus ride through town and all that kind of stuff but it doesn't it's not until year two three three or four years that you actually kind of look back at it and on it mm -hmm. Did you win any of your titles or when you weren't playing? Can you remember? Uh, no. No. No, never. You, um, you did them all on the pitch? Yeah, I think we won one, one year. We were seven or eight games left. <laughs> we never won a match in the seven or eight games. You'd be surprised to know. <laughs> I've no idea where we'd been. Yes. 3-0 to Liverpool. Mane now five or six yards inside the Crystal Palace half takes on Ward who puts in the challenge bounces out of play handily for Liverpool that's right next to where one of those disinfected balls is on a cone so Mane picks it straight up and takes the throw and Liverpool are back in business again Liverpool have dropped only seven points all season so on Sunday 
at Watford shortly before the shutdown when there was that extraordinary 3-0 defeat which stands out like a sore thumb now their record this season and then the uh, the 1-1 at Old Trafford early on in the season when Lalana scored the late equaliser other than that they've won the lot it'll be 28 out of 31 that they've won and uh, and that run of 18 consecutive wins that was really where they they won it effectively yeah, yeah. here's Henderson on the right hand side. I think it's just the way they play as well, isn't it? Which which loads of people, not necessarily Liverpool fans, really do appreciate the way they play football. And they've gone past the, the 100 goal mark in all competitions tonight. Here's Robertson. Robertson playing it in to Mane, who gives it back to Robertson, who plays it straight into the path of Sacco, who adjusts himself and then clears away. But it comes back again at the Palace defence. Mane, they are hungry here, Liverpool. Salah curls it narrowly wide of the far top corner that looked like it was going in from our position didn't it most certainly the classic Mo Salah into his feet on his left minimum back lift curls it away from the goalkeeper far post I make it that Palace have had one chance and they should have scored actually Maya when he broke away yeah edge of the area yeah he had a lot of space didn't he and that was it was 1-0 at the time it to was, Liverpool yeah I think we're going to see a, uh, a change. I think that is that Milivojevic, yes it is. Just turns around, says his red number four on the back of his white shirt. Got uh, just over 25 minutes to play here at Anfield and you certainly would not bet against Liverpool, adding to their tally of three goals already in this match. And, uh, and Jurgen Klopp is going to make his first change as well. And it is going to be Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain who's coming on as a substitute, as he did on uh, Sunday at Goodison Park and he's going to replace Jordan Henderson who gives the captain's armband to Fabinho who passes it on to Van Dijk who's putting it on his left arm and uh, Jordan Henderson just steps down there are various fist bumps and elbow touches mm -hmm. and air fist bumps going on down there with people wearing gloves that very much a sign of the times mm. and, he, and he disappears up to find one of those empty comfortable looking red seats look great don't they they do don't they yeah you look as though you could have an afternoon nap in there quite nicely <laughs> you wish Gomez playing it back into his own half to Van Dijk and then uh, Mane works it here to the right hand side to Gomez Oxlade Chamberlain currently in quite an advanced position there Liverpool's number 15 Robertson playing it back to the halfway line and uh, Palace are going to make a double change actually very shortly and uh, I think Riedewald's going to come on as well another Dutch international defender Liverpool still in possession playing from le left to right as we look here Jurgen Klopp sends more substitutes out to warm up and Liverpool playing it to Robertson on the left hand side now here is Firmino Firmino forward to the edge of the area, bounces to Oxlade-Chamberlain, into the box, left foot, arrows a shot goalwards, but wider the near post, and it's bouncing around on that famous flag in the middle of the cop. They like him here, they like him in terms of the coaching staff, Oxlade-Chamberlain, because they think he's, he's one of the few midfield players who'll get forward and get you a goal. I know Fabinho just smashed one in from 35 yards, but very much he's that way, he gives them something a little bit different. Palace are going to make their changes now, their first, um, their uh, second and third changes after losing Zahar after only 15 minutes. And uh, it's going to be Kuyate who is the first to make it away, who's gone quiet actually in the match. And he's replaced by Milivojevic. And uh, Riedewald comes on for MacArthur, it is. Yeah, is I mean. Leaving. They've tried, they've tried very, very hard. They've just, they've just basically been outplayed, haven't they? And, as you said, losing the best player, Zaha, so early in the game, straight away you could almost see and feel as though the heads went down, didn't they, straight away? Looks as though Riedewald's going to take up a midfield position. He can play there, either at the back or in midfield. And uh, Milivojevic has gone in there as well. So they've changed two of their three central midfielders Crystal Palace and that's two of their substitute slots used now 
so just the one left for Roy Hodgson to use. But uh, the game has gone, and we've still got a quarter of it to play. Here comes Ayu, who takes it on. Might have just been shoved over there by Firmino. He went. He lo certainly lost his footing. I think he might have felt a hand in the middle of his back, mm. but no free kick. I think he played for it a little bit. Martin Atkinson's done really well, actually. I mean, he's not been a game of massive um, talking points or anything, but he's, he's kept up with the game really well, and he's trying to let the game flow. Yes, although I suspect Roy Hodgson might have a Disagree. word about that, about that mm. first free kick that led to the yeah, be interesting. goal. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Here's Gomez. Gomez now lifts it out towards the left-hand side. Robertson is there. Back it comes towards... The uh, Wijnaldum, who swings it out towards the right-hand side. It bounces down. Fabinho, now Wijnaldum again. Wijnaldum then has Van Aanholt for some reason. The left-back tackling Wijnaldum near the halfway line. Van Aanholt very quickly back into position. And then Salas passes a little short, so Riedewald cuts that out. Maya sends one forward for... Are you to chase, but Gomez is able Brilliant. to stick out a leg and pull it down, and Liverpool are back in possession inside Great their play, own. Great play, wasn't it? Brilliant. And then uh, Palace win it on the halfway line. Here's Townsend, has a look over his shoulder. Townsend looks infield, plays it to the right hand side. Ward is there. Back to Townsend again, but Townsend has ended up going down a bit of a cul-de-sac there and has to play it up the line, and he's given it away to Liverpool, and Palace could be stretched here. Oh. Salah plays it forward, that's brilliant ball. Into the path of Mane, Mane into the box, right foot finish, 4-0. And that was an electric break by Liverpool. Salah's pass was perfectly into the path of Mane, who was sprinting through into the area, and from that point on... It was always going to be goal number four, and Liverpool are cantering it now. Yeah, great, great pass from Salah in his own half. He'd, he'd already looked, had a look where Mane was, has just played it right into the space. Mane cut the t touches, has a little look where the goalkeeper is, and just basically passes it past him. Yeah, just where he wanted it, cutting in to the area from the left hand side on his right foot. Just stroked it away beautifully. A low shot bouncing beyond Hennessy's dive down to his left. Perfect. And uh, just as in the first half, they've scored just before the drinks break. And 4-0 uh, up, they're on the way to the, the victory that they wanted tonight. I think, the, I think the victory, but also a return to a dominant performance, really. And that's what they've done. Yeah, tonight. it's just like, this is now like watching them before lockdown, basically. Um, obviously, Sunday wasn't. Uh, which you're, you're always going to get because you're never quite sure when you, you know they're out for so long but they just now look like the team that they were before lockdown quite quite simply and and Palace uh, yes unfortunate to lose Zaha but have just been completely outplayed and it could get worse well actually they, they look more like the team that they were before they had their their winter break you know because there were one or two stuttering performances in there from Liverpool if you think of the you know, the home win against Bournemouth, the yeah. home win against West Ham, yeah. which were both a bit of a struggle. And edgy, then, they were edgy, weren't they? And then, uh, you know, obviously losing at Watford. I saw them at Norwich when they won there, but didn't create a great deal. But but tonight, they've they've created... Yeah. They've created... But to be honest with you, show. John, it's, it, 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 it's those games where you don't play very well and win. That generally is a secret to win in this league. And... You know, everyone says it, 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 it's a marathon and, and it really seriously is and you play in all different weathers as you know and there's all sorts of different games in between, cup competitions etc etc and uh, they've been absolutely outstanding, I mean this this front three as well, it must be horrible to play against, horrible Well that for Mane that is 19th of the season, 15 of those in the Premier League so he's up there in the in the chase for the uh, the golden boot as well. And I see that uh, Nico Williams is going to get a, a run out. He's yet to appear in the Premier League. We've, ah. we've seen him in the Cups, he's and he's a, looked good. He's a player, this lad. Yes, he has. He's a player. Young Welshman yeah. from Wrexham. That's where he was born. And uh, he's going to come on at uh, right back, I presume, for Alexander-Arnold, who's just heading the ball back now to Alisson, who has had a very quiet night. 
the Liverpool goalkeeper. There's no danger of him getting injured on a night like this, you would think. No. And as long as no one stays, he's, he reminds us of Joey Jones when he comes on this lad. Nico Williams. But that's what uh, I mean. That's what was always said about the the great Liverpool teams, Mark. That, that you were very much a part of. It was it was those results that Liverpool would get when you didn't play well. That's what I always remember. Yeah, yeah. Being said about and your it was, teams. It was regular. Well, also you think you know. The pitches were, were hopeless in those days as well. It was a nightmare. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you must have been like me and, and the rest of us watching some of the the, the, the retro footage of, uh, of matches from times past, and the pitches are incredible. Some of those match of the days during lockdown. Yeah. Amazing. Going to be a double change. I see that uh, Minamino is going to come on as well for Liverpool, having started at Goodison the other night. I would have thought maybe come on for Firmino because that's ultimately I think where he's going to play I can't see where else Mil uh, Minamino is going to play in terms of the front three it's 4-0 to Liverpool BBC Radio 5 live this is the commentary with the artificial soundtrack the crowd noise you can hear the clean commentary on 5 Live Sports Extra and tell us what you think uh, at BBC 5 Live or 85058 as Crystal Palace bring the ball away and then Gomez crunches in with a challenge, it bounces out of play, and we will see Liverpool's next couple of changes now. So Alexander-Arnold making way for Nico Williams. I don't think he's seen his number yet. He has now. And uh, off he comes, Jurgen Klopp is right there, actually, next to Alexander-Arnold. So Nico Williams is under the field, Liverpool's number 76, the 19-year-old Welsh under-19 international. He's made a handful of appearances this season, but this is his Premier League debut. And it is, you're right, Mark, Firmino is replaced by the Japanese Minamino. Really good piece of management there. Remember on, on Sunday when we were at Goodison watching uh, Liverpool and Alexander-Arnold didn't have the best of days, did he? And, and we could see and hear Klopp screaming at him and everything. He just took him off there and he just gave him a massive hug. I know he's not supposed to. But obviously forgot. Just gave him a massive hug, and it's like he's gone from Sunday being useless to tonight being brilliant. And I just think it's really clever stuff like that. 15 minutes to play. Liverpool leading Crystal Palace by four goals to nil. Mark Lawrenson with us here, high up in the main stand at Anfield, without any supporters. But uh, all of the banners, the Liverpool banners, the the home supporters. They've arranged, obviously, to bring them in, and they've all been placed on the cop, so there is that feeling, I suppose, that the supporters are here in spirit, if not in person. As uh, Salah will challenge Van Anholt, who's in danger of losing it on the edge of his own penalty area. Wijnaldum takes up possession, but plays it back towards the halfway line. And then Gomez finds Salah on the right-hand side. Salah forward towards... The newly arrived Williams, who was challenged by Riedewald and as a result just took a heavy touch and knocked it through for a goal kick. So 4-0 to Liverpool tonight. Uh, tomorrow night we will be on, early, uh, on air early again, Five Live Sports, so drive will be truncated uh, because we have Burnley Watford on Five Live from 6 o'clock. Southampton Arsenal is on Sports Extra, there's a foul on uh, Joel Ward over there on the far side by Robertson, free kick to Palace deep inside their own territory. 8.15 tomorrow night, Chelsea against Manchester City, and with this scoreline, if Manchester City do not win that tomorrow night, then Liverpool will be confirmed as champions. You'll hear it here on 5 Live, 8.15 kickoff. This weekend, a whole range of Premier League and FA Cup quarter-final commentaries, and Liverpool's next match should it go to that, will be next Thursday at Manchester City. So if they, they don't, uh, if they aren't confirmed tomorrow night, they'll have a chance to win it at the home of the defending champions. And is it definitely going to be at City? It, that will be discussed tomorrow okay. by the Manchester City Council, the relevant group. So we should have a decision tomorrow. I don't know about you, well, but having been to a couple of matches already at Manchester City, I'm really not sure why it, it wouldn't be played no. at City. Well, the thing, uh, thing is, John, where else are you going to play? And if they're worried about supporters going, 
Liverpool supporters going just to be around the ground, they will, they'd go anywhere, wouldn't yeah, they? they? They would. And, and there's thousands of them all over the country, so where would, where would you pick? And I know from, being, from having gone to Manchester City twice that it's incredibly well organised there as uh, Fabinho tries to take the ball into the penalty area looking for a second goal on the night but uh, loses possession and Palace are able to clear Liverpool with Van Dijk Van Dijk carries it halfway inside the Palace half and then it's worked here by Oxlade Chamberlain to Williams Nico Williams for Liverpool taking over from uh, Alexander Arnold so the 66 went off and the 76 has come on at right back here's Van Dijk playing it to Williams Williams then back to Van Dijk, six or seven yards forward of the centre circle. Uh, and then Van Dijk will actually go back to Robertson and Liverpool go back towards the halfway line. Yes, at Manchester City, it's, it's brilliantly organised. And actually, the area around the stadium, yeah. you, you, you can't get close no, to the can't. stadium. No, absolutely. And um, Van Dijk passing it forward to... Mane, Mane who took his goal very well tonight as well, Ward into the challenge and the ball bounces off Mane and bounces all the way through for a goal kick. So I suppose Fabinho's the pick of the night, but there have been some good goals tonight, mm -hmm. very good goals. Yeah. Fabinho 35 yards out or not quite 35? Oh, oh, I'm with you. Certainly looked it. Purest of strikes. So 4-0 to Liverpool. And... Uh, and Crystal Palace just haven't been able to live with them tonight. Crystal Palace, who, as I say, will uh, be at home to Burnley on Monday. We'll have more reaction after the match finishes this evening to the earlier wins for Manchester United and Everton and Wolves. Finished 1-1 between Newcastle and Aston Villa. You'll hear all of the interviews and reaction. And uh, whoever speaks to us here at Anfield on the Five Live Football Daily podcast. And there's a match of the day tomorrow night at 10.30 on BBC Two with all of the goals. Uh, free kick for Palace, a foul centre field on James McCarthy, and Palace have a free kick 10 yards inside their own half. Will you be able to find a hotel in London tomorrow? I have, yes. Ah. yes. Ways and means. Yeah. Cahill playing the ball to the right-hand side. Ward. Yes. Then back in field to... McCarthy who plays it out to the right hand side and now Van Arnholt will take it on but Williams in with a challenge good one as well Williams then lifting the pass forward into the Crystal Palace half but that's headed away by Ward just a little scrappy now since the substitutions took place and Liverpool scored the fourth goal Sacco playing it forward towards Maya and then Maya turning and his ball is beyond IU and, and Liverpool have got it back once again so 4-0 Liverpool lead feel a bit sorry for IU he's kind of been up there on his own fighting against Gomez and Van Dijk with hardly any service whatsoever you take Zaha away from this Crystal Palace team yeah. and they lose an awful lot yeah absolutely but the thing about him John just not his brilliance but he'll also keep the ball for you for ages that's you know that's another part of him We'll hear from Roy Hodgson later. It'd be interesting to find out if, uh, you know, whether, whether there was an issue for Zaha, whether he has aggravated something. The ball's back with Palace inside their penalty area. Cahill playing it away out towards the, the far side. Ward is going to hit a long pass, but that's cut out by Robertson and the ball bouncing around in the lower tier of the, uh, the former centenary stand, the Sir Kenny Dalglish stand, which has his name beaming out in the... The red letters right at the top, way above the surface of the pitch. Ten minutes to go. I notice as well, they, they do actually produce a match programme, Liverpool, for this, just like Everton did on Sunday. And uh, I notice in there that one of your old te teammates, Craig Johnston, is 60 tomorrow. Yeah, crikey. Doesn't that make you feel old? I am old. <laughs> well, Liverpool breaking forward with Salah, and then Salah finds Wijnaldum, Left corner of the box, Wijnaldum turns and uses Robertson, who's arriving behind him. And Robertson puts his foot on the ball, little scurry forward again. He does have support there from Mane. Now back centrally it comes, and it's worked here to the right-hand side to Williams. Nico Williams taking on Van Anholt, cuts back onto his left foot, but uses his right to find Salah behind him. Salah, low ball into the area to Minamino, who tried to give it back to Salah, but it was just a little short. 
and Palace were able to clear it away again to the halfway line. He was way ahead of his time, you know, Craig Johnson. We'd, we'd have a pre-match meal and, you know, we'd have beans on toast, chicken on toast and everything. He'd bring this Tupperware thing in with rice and peas and we all thought he'd lost the plot. He was, <laughs> he was years ahead of himself. Well, he, he was, absolutely. Now we're all bringing Tupperware boxes. Yeah, there you not go. Just, not just the players. No. I notice as well, Mark, you, you see there's a lovely tribute to another former teammate, Michael Robinson as yeah. well. First Liverpool home match since he sadly passed away. Yeah, and uh, I think he only did one season here, Robbo. I mean, he, he, I played at, well, three different clubs with him and also for, for the Republic. But I think his year here, I think uh, he's got the best pro rata games to trophies ever. 52 games and three trophies. <laughs> He was always laughing and smiling, Rob. He was great, great, great guy. And when you think what he did in Spain, John, it was amazing. Mm. You know, to go and front the programmes and everything, not in your main language. Mm. Amazing. Mane now playing the ball to the left, but the ball actually hit Martin Atkinson, so it had to be brought back for a drop ball, even though Robertson was in down the left-hand side, and he's looking to the heavens, Robertson, as he holds the ball, and Martin Atkinson saying, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've got to bring it back for the drop ball. And uh, Liverpool are going to make uh, their last couple of changes. Going to use the full five, Jurgen Klopp. And uh, it's going to be... Is that Robertson's number was up? Yeah, it is. Andy Robertson, of course, had a knock, wasn't able to start or play a part at Goodison Park on Sunday in the derby match. So he's going to be replaced by young Harvey Elliott, the, uh, the 17-year-old, the former Fulham youngster. Palace are making a change as well there. Are you making way? And uh, we are seeing Brandon Purick coming on to replace him. And Nabi Keita is coming on as well for Sadio Mane. So it's uh, Keita on for Robertson and Elliott on for Mane. He's got a future, this kid. He's got a long future. He's at just 17 has. years wow, old. Oh, yeah. Do you like what you've seen so far? Ah, oh, very good. Very good. So it is 4 0 to Liverpool. We're into the last knockings now, really. All of the. This is one of those matches where the, the situation in the game, Liverpool winning comfortably, and all of the substitutions have really broken it up and disrupted it. Hennessy clearing from the six yard box to the halfway line. Gomez nodding it forward. He has the, the massively haired Reed of Alt. He's certainly not married to a hairdresser. Back it goes to goalkeeper. Well, if he is, she doesn't like him. <laughs> well, <laughs> or, or it's by design, of course. There would be yeah. nothing wrong with that. Hennessy clearing from the six-yard box. As uh, Salah, Sacco with a touch. Now he has Minamino on the right-hand side. Minamino, his black hair flowing as he gives it to Williams on the right-hand side. Williams with the cross, Cahill heads it away. He's headed it to the edge of the area, but the chest down from Oxlade-Chamberlain was, uh, was too strong, too heavy, took it away from him, and Palace were able to clear. Uh, incidentally, the, uh, the number 40, Brandon Pierrick, who's come on up front for Crystal Palace, who's taken the place of Ayu, who's worked extremely hard up there and... For no reward. No, and it's probably due a break. This is just his third appearance for the first team, made his debut on New Year's Day as a substitute at Norwich, and uh, he's a young Londoner, born in Lambeth. So we'll see how he does up front. Looks quite strongly built. And uh, Liverpool in possession. The ball played up to young Harvey Elliott with his... Fair hair tied up tightly with a, in a bun at the back of his head. Williams, Williams playing it through to the edge of the area. Slipped forward by Oxley chamberlain Now Minamino tries to pull it back from the right-hand side towards the penalty spot, but it was intercepted there by McCarthy. And Palace are able to clear away towards the halfway line. Liverpool come again. Oxley chamberlain sweeps it in front of Martin Atkinson, who does well to get out of the, did well to get out of the way. Four minutes to play, plus added time. Liverpool leading with goals from Alexander-Arnold from a free kick. Salah scored just before half-time from Fabinho's ball over the top. Fabinho scored a wonderful goal in the 55th minute, and Sadio Mane finished off an excellent move from Liverpool. If you remember, that goal came from Townsend in possession near the Liverpool corner flag. 
and Liverpool got the ball back, broke away downfield, and Salah hit a wonderful pass through for Mane to run onto and score. So those are the four that we've seen tonight. And Liverpool looking here for a fifth, ball headed forward by Salah, flicked back by Oxlade-Chamberlain, but it was cut out in there for Palace, sheer force of numbers. And eventually it's deflected out of play for a throw into Palace halfway inside their own half. Well, they've won in the canter in the end of a fall, haven't they? But, uh, you know, Palace, unfortunate, the Zaha injury completely put them all over the place. And 2-0 down at half-time could have been more. And it really was game over, wasn't it? It was. It's their joint heaviest defeat of the season, Crystal Palace. They, they did lose 4-0 early in the season at Tottenham back in, uh, in mid-September. But 4-0 tonight, and uh, if you've just switched on, it means that Liverpool are going to be within two points now of being confirmed as champions. And uh, that could be confirmed tomorrow night if Manchester City fail to win against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And you'll hear that commentary here on Five Live from 8.15. Kick-off tomorrow night. They'll be, be our third commentary of the night with both of the early matches on Five Live and Sports Extra. Palace playing the ball forward towards Townsend and uh, he shrugged off the ball easily and Liverpool have got it back Townsend left on the ground and here's Keita Keita having I mean, just come into the action slips a pass forward very nicely in between two Palace players to Salah and Salah now making ground down the right but he couldn't find his pass to Williams and Palace could break here Maya although it's not it's not a lightning break by any means and in fact McCarthy's well, it's not now. lost possession so Liverpool Thing have is, got it back where do you go? You get the ball in midfield, A, your head's down if you're a Palace player because Liverpool are all around you, so you can't see anything. Then if you can manage to get your head up and look, there's nothing or nobody to give the ball to and it's almost hopeless. So Liverpool playing it back towards the halfway line. So it's going to be um, an extending of the, the record of consecutive home league wins. It'll be 16 wins out of 16 here in the Premier League this season. And, and really... Nobody can live with that. If you've got that no. sort of record, that, no. that, that's a platform and a half to win a league title with. Yeah. And, they're, and they're winning it in the right way, which I think, as I say, pleases an awful lot of people. Yeah. It's certainly shaping up to be another epic battle next season if, mm. uh, if, if Manchester City's recent form is anything to go by. Liverpool win a cheap corner. Elliot plays it across. Near post flick by Minamino. Two Palace players go for it. They've managed to head it partly away. Back to Elliot. Elliot goes for the byline. The challenge comes in on him from Sacco to deflect it behind for another corner. Manchester United will be interested next season, John, as they well, will. I think. Yes. As uh, the ball's played back and there's a deflection from Keita's pass in. Milivojevic closed it down. So uh, almost a third consecutive corner over there and we'll have to see what Tottenham do as well of course Chelsea Chelsea yeah. Chelsea have made some very interesting mm, signings they have they? they have indeed they mean business Elliot to take this corner can't beat the first man it's Pierrick who is able to head it away the uh, substitute striker Townsend back in his own right back position plays it back to Hennessy who puts his foot through it and clears it high towards the halfway line where it's taken down by Gomez. Gomez tonight back in the groove in central defence but they've just not been tested, Gomez no. and Van Dijk tonight. It's an easy game. Williams, that's a lovely ball through to Salah. Salah pokes it across and it was deflected away as Minamino slid in. He must have thought he was going to score his first goal for Liverpool. And I think Ward, who went with him, was able to block it. Yeah, I, I don't think Salah's pass was, was great. It was the outside of his left foot. It just needed a bit of pace on it and, it, and Ward wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. It was Frank, a bit kind of sloppy. Frankly, I expected Salah to score. I think he just thought, you know, Minamino might get his first goal here, which is just a little bit lackadaisical. Minamino ended up sliding. He ended up himself in the net rather than the ball, and he was looking up at the roof of the net from inside the goal, thinking, what a chance that was. But here he comes again, Minamino. Minamino turning, using Elliot. Elliot skipping away from the challenge, looping the ball into the penalty area. Cahill comes across and heads it out for a throw on the far side. Two-footed, that lad, Elliot. Yeah, very promising, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Harvey Elliot taken from Fulham yes Fulham youngster made made three appearances for them last season when he was 16 just turned 17 in April and uh, we know 
We know from the, the glimpses we've had of him so far that he does not lack confidence. Oh, yeah, but in a, in a nice way, though. Yeah, it's and, not arrogance. And here he is. He's got space again on the left-hand side. A first-time pass from him. Sacco <laughs> half-heads it away. Salah shoots goalwards. That's blocked by Van Anholt. And then Williams with a sliding shot that is smuggled behind. I think Sacco actually threw himself in front of it and deflected it round for another corner. He did. He, he got it right in the end, Sacco. Liverpool really searching for a fifth here. Corner this time from the right hand side, but there's it's going to be Salah to take it in swinger to the near post. Two Palace defenders went for it, headed out to Williams, rattles around inside the box. Sacco got under it to clear it away. And Liverpool will attack again towards the cop. We're two minutes into added time. Van Dyke's not even bothering to go back. Look. He, he stayed up there, Van Dyke, and might be a fifth goal just to add a a final touch of gloss to this, but it's been an impressive performance from Liverpool tonight. Certainly not Crystal Palace's night. And Salah now, perhaps one final attack towards the cop. He's into the area. He's leading Van Anholt a merry dance. He just couldn't get past him. Van Anholt cleared it, but only to Williams. Oh, lovely feet. Left foot shot. And Hennessy is able to catch it just above his right eyebrow. Yeah, I think either side of him, it might have been a debut goal for Williams. Nice feet. And what a goal. Really that nice been. feet, yeah. Change of feet on the edge of the area, took it with his left, right, back onto his left, but shot straight at the goalkeeper. Yeah, it certainly wasn't a Sacco change of feet, was it? It was not. 4 0 to Liverpool. Don't be unkind, Mark. They've, no, 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 he's, a, I was a, he's a good defender, he's just a yes. little bit unorthodox. They've had a tough night, Palace. They've really had a tough night. They've caught Liverpool in, uh, in great shape. And Jurgen Klopp goes across to Roy Hodgson, Li Liverpool manager and former Liverpool manager, together. And there's an acknowledgement there that it's very, been very much Liverpool's night. Alexander-Arnold, Salah, Fabinho, Mane, some really good goals in there. And Liverpool now on the brink of confirming the Premier League title, Mark Lawrenson. Yeah, very good performance. I think we discussed that, you know, once uh, Zaha went off after however 15, 20 minutes, certainly Palace, you see the heads go down, 2-0 down at half-time, 4-0 eventually for uh, Liverpool, quality goals as well, quality performance, and they've basically reverted to type, John. They have 16 wins out of 16 at home in the Premier League this season. They are very close now to being confirmed as Premier League champions. They are within two points, and it could happen tomorrow night. You'll hear it on Five Live if Manchester City are unable to win against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Tonight, Liverpool's night. They've won 4 0 against Crystal Palace. And we'll be reacting to that game through till 10.30 when Colin Murray will take over on Five Live. Just looking at some of our messages to 85058 and at Five Live Sport. Chris, Palace wouldn't come back into this game if all 10 outfield players left the pitch and it was just Alisson on his own. Uh, Leon, this Liverpool team make football look so easy when they score with style and defend with style. Jake, Jurgen Klopp, you're the reason why millions of people around the world are happy today. Thank you so much for taking us back to where we belong. Um, Qatar says Fabinho has been excellent tonight, looks back to his best. Rahul, Liverpool just running circles around Crystal Palace. Uh, our correspondent John Murray has been at Anfield all night. And um, I mean, the, the story of the game, John, is a, a stroll for Liverpool. Stroll for Liverpool. I think what was important for Crystal Palace was losing Wilfried Zaha after 15 minutes. Uh, that that a serious loss. He's such an important player for them. But Liverpool are in the mood tonight, uh, and uh, you know that that's what Jurgen Klopp wanted to see tonight. He wanted to see them back towards their best after really a, a stuttering run by their standards before the shutdown. They weren't at their best at Goodison Park in the derby match on Sunday, but they turned it on tonight. And really, a match at Anfield behind closed doors is just a surreal experience. It really football is really not meant to be like this but it was a Liverpool performance if you, you could be fooled for thinking that it was played out in front of a full and raucous Anfield because they created so many chances scored two goals in each half and some really good goals the the free kick from Alexander Arnold midway through the first half I think Crystal Palace might feel aggrieved that it had been given but it was well well dispatched by Alexander Arnold the second goal taken down by Salah, Fabinho's ball over the top, Van Anholt misread it, good finish from Salah. The third goal, what a goal. You, you really need to see this one. A sweetly struck shot by Fabinho from 35 yards. That flew into the net. And then the, the fourth goal, which, which in the end rounded it off. A really good breakaway, 
excellent pass from Salah from inside his own half, setting Mane through to finish very well. So those are the four goals, and uh, as dominant as it sounds. Mm. Mark Lawrenson is uh, with John at Anfield, a winner, of course, of, of five league titles. Uh, I mean, the, the experience must have been strange, especially when you watch the, the quality of the goals, because it's just crying out for fans to be standing in adulation, particularly for Fabinho. Yeah, um, as, as John said, it was a fantastic, you know, pure, pure strike. It's, I don't think it's anything, obviously, we're ever going to get used to, but I think, you know, the, the thing is for Liverpool, Steve, is, is if you looked at Sunday's performance and looked at tonight's polar opposites, so it would just appear that the, the first game behind closed doors, which, of course, was a Merseyside derby, they didn't really cope with that particularly well, but like a good team at least came out with a point, and, and tonight was just normal Liverpool performance, which is why they're going to win the league, but without the spectators. And, um, you know, there's, there's not a lot to be said about it because it's just, at times, it's, it's a surreal atmosphere, but it certainly didn't stop Liverpool tonight. They were really very much back at it. And no one's going to stop Liverpool. They're top of the league. No. They've got 86 points. They're 23 points ahead of Manchester City. Um, City's game at Chelsea's live on Five Live Sport on Thursday. If City don't win, then Liverpool win the title tomorrow night. Oh, we can bring Colin Murray in as well. How does that sound? Liverpool can win the league tomorrow. Yeah. I don't want that to happen, no. It's, I think, no team, no matter who you support, you want it to be your game. You want yeah. it to happen at your feet. But uh, with these late kickoffs as well, just so all five live sport fans know, we'll always go into extra time after half past, so the quarter to at least. We'll make sure you still hear from the managers and so many other games today. It, it's been, obviously, a season like no other, but uh, tonight was an absolute buzz, and Fabinho, again, was amazing. He's maybe not the first name in everyone's lips when you talk about irreplaceable Liverpool players, but this season he's been a revelation. They, they call him the Hoover. That's his nickname at the club, but for obvious reasons, he cleans everything up. But he's like the video game Pac-Man. He just gobbles up white round circles until it says game over on your screen. <laughs> and he was imperious tonight, the, the, the assist for Salah, the wonder goal, similar to the one he scored against Man City. But it's, it's more than, he's that player, he's a, I don't know whether Laura would agree, but a footballer's footballer, the simple yeah. things that he does yeah. well, is just, as a, if you go to loads of Liverpool games, he is, he is just wonderful. I thought when you said he's a Hoover, I thought you were gonna say, because you don't see him for dust. <laughs> <laughs> that must be slightly confusing with the Liverpool player whose name is actually Hoover yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah you'd be gutted, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, I mean, I mean he, he's been a sensational signing, for Fabinho, Mark, and his his growth has been phenomenal, really. Yeah, it's taken a while, to, in, in fairness, yeah. which, you know, sometimes you, you, you buy players and um, you don't really know, especially with, with the foreign players who, who don't know the language when they first get here, etc. And, you know, bring the family over and it's all a little bit of a strange experience. Some just get it straight away. Some three months, six months, nine months. Some even it's the, it's the next season. But, you know, I think one of the things you talk about when you talk about the football club and the players that Klopp's brought in, I can't remember him buying anybody that hasn't really done it apart from um, Carrius. I'm just, I'm just trying to think. Maybe Colin might know better than me. But looking at all, oh John, so looking at all the players that, that Klopp's bought, I don't, I don't see any flops. Really, don't. Klopp flops. It's a short list. Klopp um, flops. Still yeah. waiting. I think, I think when Kader came in and Fabinho came in, not far away from each other, I, I kind of probably had higher hopes for Kader, but so still waiting for that development to think to happen but that's that's not a done deal that's a work in, work in progress yeah sure and as you yeah. say you know for being here this season but there's there's not too too many but I think Carrius counts as three though doesn't he yeah yeah <laughs> well you don't bad, never sign a goalkeeper that's not got any hands do you <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the point that Colin made before about winning it on the pitch Mark is so important your five league titles did, did you win all of them on the pitch or did you have any of those scenarios where another result goes your way and you, you win it without playing no we, I think we wouldn't win all of them um, in, and that's what you fairness. want isn't it yeah yeah, because it, otherwise it feels a, a little bit strange. It, it can, I suppose, feel a little bit like somebody else has given you, but they've not because you've got, you know, the more points than anybody. And, uh, you know, as I was saying to John before, it, it's it's a strange thing. And, and 
things like winning the league actually don't sink in for ages. You th you think they sink in straight away, especially if the, if you know we obviously we had the crowd there all the time. But it it does take a long time before you actually sit and think and someone say to you, I "Remember when you won the league in whatever year it was?" And half the time you can't remember anyway. But it, it's it's just you get a nice glow eventually when someone says, "Oh, by the way, did you know you won five league titles?" I mean, I, mm. I went around for ages and I never realised the first three years I was here, we won the league. And I hadn't really kind of even thought about it. And I'd said I was coming from Brighton to win loads of medals for Liverpool, tongue in cheek, because I wasn't going to Manchester United or Arsenal. And, and lo and behold, it happened. If somebody said to you, Mark, you know, back in 1990 that uh, yeah, Liverpool won't win it again yeah. until 2020. Yeah. Well, would, you think they'd been, you think they'd been in the King Harry pub all night, to be honest with you. <laughs> If, probably if, have been. If, if that was a okay. well, you probably yeah. but no, no. I mean that's that that is absolutely staggering. So when we're talking about not winning in not winning it with supporters after 30 years, does it really matter? Does to the supporters, but does it really matter? No, does it? I'm not sure it does to me. Uh, yeah, of course, I'd rather be there. I remember tonight just I saw a shot of uh, Ken Kenny sitting and all he's been through mm. recently, and I thought you'll do me. You can represent 50,000 on your own um, and I think it, it's when you watch the Bundesliga I think John you and I had this conversation on it might have been Alistair Bruce Ball a long time ago but when the Bundesliga came back and everyone said oh this isn't the way it should be it's like because it's not your team so you ask a United fan sitting tonight watching Fernandez and Pogba start for the first time and at times Pogba was unplayable the two of them were fantastic together and, you know, Martial just thrives since Fernandez has been there. Is it six goals in seven games? Mm -hmm. They were screaming. Mm -hmm. They were jumping up and down. They were phoning their mates. They got that community back. Nothing's right now. Everything's imperfect until we get through this ghastly bag of jeans. And when we get there, then we'll go back. But I think it's the community of your club. It doesn't go away. And I watched Liverpool there tonight. I got goosebumps during You Never Walk Alone. I've been talking to my mates all night. I think it's the same for football fans. So... I think from a fan's point of view, yes, of course, it's different, but, jeez, when we win the league, I'll be climbing. I'll be climbing up the walls. It'll be fantastic. What did um, What do you think about the way that they sort of dressed up Anfield, Colin? I know Jurgen Klopp had said before the game he was really looking forward to seeing how yeah. it looked. I think there was some really good jobs that'd be done, actually. I think I think United's was good tonight. Yeah. You know, it was we're all over. I thought it was fantastic. There'd be some funny stories coming out of it as well. But what I like with Liverpool is it was all the local flags, you know, so I was seeing flags that were connected very much to the heart of the club and the politics of the club. And um, so it felt like, you know, I know those flags and I know who owns some of them. And, you know, so I was seeing the flags I would have seen. So I thought it was nice. It was very local in what was put in the cup. And I think that really helped. So I think it's like, it's tough for every club, you know, what do you do? Um, mm -hmm. But I think, Colin, was, yeah, I think was, it did a good was, job. Was there many in the main stand? Because we're like at the top of it, we can't see didn't show it much All right, so okay. you only ever get to see the three sides but ev everywhere had something you know yeah. uh, a lot of close-ups of, of King Kenny and uh, Mark Bright tonight was, was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were saying, really? we saying one happier than the other I yeah. have to say um, long drive back for Brighty <laughs> <it's a long laughs> and he's but, hey, but he's got a Mercedes so he'll be alright um, um, but yeah just the, the cop was the focus most of the time when they were going to flags and it was I thought they did it really well as, as they did it at United tonight if we, if we can't be there, at least we can have our flags there. You know, you know what I like, John, as well, is that everybody knows Liverpool have been sensational this season. And I remember when we saw Manchester City the other night, one of the first things Jurgen Klopp said the next day was, it's amazing to think what we've done, that there is any team that can be 20 points ahead of how <clears throat> good they are. Mm. You made the point in commentary that this wasn't just like Liverpool pre-lockdown. This was Liverpool pre-winter break. And it would be great to see... Liverpool in fifth gear on all cylinders, really just reminding anybody who needs reminding in the final days of the season how good they are. Yeah, but as Mark said, um, as Mark said, you know, during the course of a season, it is going to ebb and flow. So we're we're looking at this through a particular window on this season where Manchester City are have been in 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 very good form. You know, they've put in two very good performances. Yeah. But if you look back at the at the period when Liverpool put together 18 consecutive wins, the fact that they've won 16 out of 16 at home in the Premier League, then you, you know they've been that spell before Christmas when they were just unplayable. They you know they were they were. 
they were crushing everyone mm. in their path. Well, they, they dispatched City here, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. As well. Fabinho again, wonder goal. Yeah. yeah. It, that, that's almost you just look at it, sorry, I was, I was just going to say, the other thing with Manchester City, what a decision that was, A, to let company go, but B, not, not to replace him. Mm. I think it's a, it's a massive thing this season. For, yeah. for Manchester City, I'm not saying they would have won the league because Liverpool have, have been a far better side. But that that was a major, major poor decision for me. Not maybe to let him go because he decided he wanted to go, but not really to replace him. And that really has been their Achilles heel. Have they not lost seven games, City? Seven, yeah. Which is unheard of normally, isn't it? Yeah. I so suppose the, that and to lose Laporte as well yeah. To, yeah, for, yeah. for so much of the season. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting one, that, because I totally agree with you, Mark. At, at the same time, I wonder if if Salah or Mane or Firmino had got an injury as serious as Laporte had got, mm-hmm. would people now be saying, "Oh well, Liverpool should have got gone out and got more depth to that front three? I think it's different, Steve, because you know the, the thing about company. Um, he played the, probably in the last third of the season, scored that wonder goal against Leicester, mm. etc. But you know, if 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 you even even if you're missing your star striker or one of them, if mm. you're not if you're not conceding goals with with the quality of the other players that you've got, you're always going to win the majority of games. If if every game in this league after 90 minutes you've got a nil against your you know in terms of defensively, you're always going to get chances to win games. So um, it's slight slightly different, and um, yeah, I just think that was I just think that was a big thing for City not to not to replace him. I think it's also not just about the calibre of the person as a footballer, it's about the calibre of them in the dressing room and their importance mm. to the club. So, you you know, I would be very happy if Liverpool's front three stayed until they literally couldn't even stand up <laughs> to kick a ball. Um, that would be wonderful if, if I was in charge. But, but Firmino's the one for me. I know John Barnes waxes lyrical about how important he is. I, I don't see an obvious replacement, but you could spend money and replace Salah. Uh, even though you don't want to, whereas mm. some players you can't, and there's, you know, in particular, what we're talking about, well, I th- Man City, I, a huge I, character. Yeah, I think uh, Minamino's eventually going to be playing where Firmino plays. You I think must that, have some I eyesight. That's, that's, well, no, honestly, I think, I, think, I think that is the idea. Yeah. Um, because if you, if you lot, watched, if you, well, if you watched on Sunday, Basically, Minamino was running into all the spaces that that Firmino was in, which obviously you know, which is why they didn't play particularly well. But that that I think that's basically where where they see him playing. I mean, he's not going to get in the team as long as Firmino's here for a while. But I think I think eventually that's the idea. Some uh, it's some conversation if you did a list of Liverpool irreplaceables at the moment. You know, if you those players that you would hold onto their legs to stop them leaving because you'd you'd have to go Virgil van Dijk, the goalkeeper, Fabinho, Firmino, Trent. Fullbacks. <laughs> Robertson. So you, you do get into that place where you, you want them happy and stay and you want them to be career players, the old school, um, you know, one or two clubbers. Um, mm. And uh, the list gets quite long before you even start mentioning players. <laughs> I didn't say Henderson there. <laughs> and you talk about his importance to the team and, and actually what they lacked when he was out earlier in the season. So, again, comes down to the character. So that, that's a huge list for Liverpool in terms of when you get into how do you replace, you know? Mark, you know um, how you do the uh, the Premier League predictions for the BBC I Sport do. website? I yeah. don't know if you've, if you've done one live before, but given all Liverpool fans <laughs> desperately want to win the title on the pitch, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow night in the Chelsea Man City game? I think City will win. That's the answer come Liverpool on, fans wanted, I think. Come on, is, how strange to say, to say is that? <laughs> come just, on, come on, win and then we'll beat you. I just think City will win. I really do. That shut you up, innit? <laughs> I wanted to ask you as well, Colin, um, given, because you, you DJ'd at my um, Freshers' Ball. And oh, wow, what one? <laughs> I'll remember it, I will remember it. Leeds, Leeds University, and uh, when you when you dropped the coral, that it it went off. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, dreaming of the, you, what the a only, night! The only band that Laura would know after 1990. Actually, so that's a good one to pick. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Actually, tonight yeah. of all nights. Um, what a line. So you you can you can throw a party because I've been there. So socially yeah. distanced Liverpool celebrations when they win that title. How do you celebrate it? What's the way to do it? So, well, I well I. I I let, do you want my party that I'm planning or do you want yeah. how people should do it? 
Um, so I live in a basement flat. So never before COVID did I ever climb through my window onto the, the bit of concrete. It's about uh, eight, about uh, about eight meters long and about two meters wide. So I've I've worked out a way where I can turn my TV around and it fills the whole window. And then I've I've got certain mates socially distanced who I go to the games with who are, who are going to come round. So we they were all set to come round tonight, obviously until what happened in the Merseyside derby. But the plan I think is to I mean just if I could say it very clinically would be to mm. climb through the window, turn the TV round, and get really drunk. So that's the three stage plan we have at, at the moment. I haven't toilet facilities, food. Haven't thought about that, but they, you will do it whatever way you can, really. And that's, I think, definitely needs to be with humans and with the new rules, you, you can do it. So that's quite nice. You can get your closest friends and family with you. So um, I can't wait. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny putting the the, uh, the peach concord on ice there for a while, mate. And uh, yeah. But I can't wait. Yeah, but I, we wouldn't get together tomorrow night in anticipation. I think that's the point about winning it on the pitch. That'll be a bit like we'll be sort of scrambling to, to talk to each other or me maybe meet up somewhere in the back garden. Yeah, the uh, the freshest ball was amazing, but I've also very much enjoyed your uh, your lock-ins on Five Live as well. So ah. they were they were fantastic. Some of, some of those shows must have been so much well, fun. I, I don't remember many of them, but yeah, it was great because <laughs> we were at the, the anxiety levels. When we, the whole thing was like, we want to look at mental health and we, we, we thought, well, well, let's rather than talk about it, let's just bring people together. Um, because that's what we're missing. And whether it's through going to the cinema, going to the museum or, or the football, that's been huge, by the way. Really has been huge because, you know, when the, when the football came back on, it gives people a chance to forget for a while, you know, and get together. And that's what the lock-in was. We're doing the lock-in 2.0 at the moment, which starts mm. at 12 to 1. That's more like a late lounge. <laughs> it's, well, the jury's out. We'll see how... We've done a couple. We'll see how it goes. But we got that coming up tonight. We're also going to be looking after ha half 11 at the key strategies for Biden and Trump. No no campaigning, just looking at the three, four, five key strategies as electioneering's already began. Trump back at his rallies, obviously been covered a lot this week and very different tactics. What's going to be the keys? We're looking at that. And the naked scientist, Dr. Chris Smith, going to join us once we finish talking about football, which, by the way, is mm -hmm. going to be quarter two at the earliest um, because these late kickoffs, Five Live Sport must get its time to hear from the managers and have a good old chat. Um, Chris Smith's going to be with us because I trust him more than anyone when it comes to reading through the coronavirus headlines and big stuff to the end of the vaccine. So I can't wait to have my friend on and he'll really give it to us straight, good or bad. You know, he really cuts through it and gives you the reality of where we are with things. So that's that's what we'll turn to after after the football. Yeah, I'm really looking forward, John, to hearing from um, from Jurgen Klopp actually, because he was he was celebrating those goals in exactly the same way <laughs> as he would have been doing if there was if there was the stadium was full and there were fans wherever it was the the proper fist pump boom with every single one. Yeah, but we didn't see him, you know, as we as we used to now, you know, walking out onto the pitch and uh, and gesturing towards the cop. So that's something else that we're not that we're not going to see that we're going to have to to live without. But um, I can see him; he's just down on the pitch side at the moment, running through his uh, various post match interviews. So I suspect we'll we'll hear him before too long. Do you want a quick Klopp story? I haven't Always. told. Um, I went to do the at home with him and. Um, as as Mark will know, we're kind of kindred spirits in this way. We're we're, we're not we're not against a plastic bag to get about, you know, if if we need it. And I didn't even think about it. I'd never really met him properly. And I went to do the at home with him for five live in his his office at, at Melwood in the manager's office. And I just had my bag for life with me with me equipment in and my iPad with my notes on it and stuff. And I walked through the door and before he said it was just a huge belly laugh and very much tongue in cheek and, and very much with love. He absolutely ambassed me for two minutes. You meet the manager of Liverpool with a plastic bag. You woke up this morning and thought it was OK to meet me with a plastic bag. Just a rare sense of humour straight away when you went. And that, that big smile is not just for the cameras. <laughs> Uh, the other scores tonight, by the way, uh, Manchester United 3, Sheffield United 0, Newcastle 1, Aston Villa 1, Norwich 0, Everton 1, uh, Wolves 1, Bournemouth 0 and of course, as we've been saying, Liverpool 4, Crystal Palace 0. I mean, Liverpool winning the title, John, is is the story above all stories. When you, you look at the way the league table is starting to form elsewhere, you know, there's every chance we might be talking about Wolves as a Champions League team. 
yeah, I mean, uh, I thought that they've started, I obviously didn't see the game earlier on tonight, but I thought they started impre- uh, in, extremely impressively at the, um, at the weekend. And also, I'd go as far as to say that, that they're one of the teams this season that have impressed me probably above most others yeah. whenever I've seen them. The, you know, and they've gone toe-to-toe with the top teams as well. And, uh, you know, if they were to finish up there, yeah, I think they des- I think they would deserve it. Well, the thing about them is that they, they sort of planned where they are now. We're in the championship, weren't they? And they were spending lots of money. Lots of other teams and clubs in the in the championship were moaning like anything about all the money that they were spending. But they they obviously had a had a master plan. They've got some outstanding players, you know. That really yeah, seriously yeah. have. And him, Jimenez as yeah. as a goal scorer. Mm. They'll all be interested in him. Mm. Well, then, and, the, he... the, and the manager wasn't the manager a goalkeeper? Yes. And didn't didn't he have a quote the other week? I don't know when it was. I can't remember his interview, but saying that, you know, someone said to him, "It's very unusual that you get a, a goalkeeper as a manager." And he said, "Well, he said I think it's the other way around." He said because most of the time goalkeepers are watching the game when they're <laughs> playing, which I thought was a really clever thing to yeah. say. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny you say about not watching the game. You could, uh, you wouldn't need to really, because you mentioned those players that stand out. So without saying the game, you've already mentioned Jimenez, of course, fifteenth league goal, but Adama Traore was delightful in the early evening. What, John? You know, without watching that game, if I'd asked you to pin your flag on a man of the match, you probably would have picked Traore, and you, and you would have been right. It was very similar to their first game back, is setting up. Uh, Jimenez, uh, another amazing assist and a performance, a fr- frightening player. Yeah, great to watch. G- yeah. Great to watch. And he, you know, his value has absolutely skyrocketed this season. Yeah. Well, he played like a man with no brain at first, didn't he? And, and, and eventually, eventually, you know, it's, it's, it's worked for him. He suddenly realised exactly what it is that he's good at. And he just repeats it and repeats it, repeats it. And, and it's working. Yeah. Steve, I, um, um, yeah, go on, Colin. No, it's just no. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no. I, I, all I was going to say is I've um, I've saw a lot of Atama Traore at uh, at Middlesbrough, and Dora, yeah. uh, I remember watching Guy Mowbray commentate on him on on Match of the Day, and he said about Traore, one day this guy will do something very, very special. Mm-hmm. I'm just not sure when that day will come. Well, um, he didn't know. He didn't know himself, did he? That's the thing. No, exactly. Oh, in fact, speaking of Guy Mowbray, um, we can actually hear from him now because he's been talking to Trent Alexander-Arnold. Oh, brilliant. Well, Trent, that looked like none of you had ever been away. How good did that feel? Really good. It felt good out there. I think a lot more fluent and a lot more rhythm than what, we, what we've seen on Sunday. I think we were disappointed at the end of that game because we never played the way that we wanted to. Um, we've been really good in training uh, going into that game, so it was disappointing to, to only get, get a draw. Um, but yeah, today we've come out, we've um, started fast, we've been really good from the start. Um, didn't really put a foot wrong in the whole game, so it, it'll go down as one of our best performances of the season, without a doubt. And Especially after everything that's gone on, to, to, to come back to Anfield and, and put in a performance like that is something very special for us. And Obviously, I hope all the fans enjoyed, enjoyed watching it as well. No. Tell us about the free kick. You couldn't have struck it much more sweetly, surely. <laughs> now, obviously, I think... Um, it's what I, I practice in training. I've tried to, to score as many as possible this season. I think that was my first direct free kick of the season. Um, but yeah, I was I was happy with the way I struck it. And it's one of them where you, you know as soon as you strike it, it's got a chance. And you're looking at the keeper, seeing if you can reach it. And you kind of know it's it, it, it's going in. You've got such a lot of competition at this club's to take those. How does the queuing system work? Are you now get first dibs? <laughs> um, I hope so. But... Um, now, like you've seen, straight afterwards we got another free kick and Fab's jumped on it, so it shows the quality that we've got. He's, he's had a decent effort, he's probably disappointed with the way it's went, but it shows the, 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 the depth that we've got in terms of taking it, and it's good to have that competition in the club to, to be able to push each other and make sure we're always, we're always on our toes and make sure we're always ready to, to step up and take them. We're all getting used to this strange new world we're living in. How strange was it to play at Anfield like this tonight? Different, very different, I think. Um, We've had to we've had to create our own atmosphere within the team, and with that being with the, with the tempo that we play at, the the communication, the 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 rhythm that we play at, we're trying to keep it as, as fast as possible and make sure that the the opponents feel that that presence that the, the fans aren't, aren't here, but still feel that presence of being at Anfield, and it's not going to be easy. So going into the game, that was what we wanted to do. We wanted to make it horrible for the opponent to come here and, 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 and get anything and make sure that if they if they are going to get anything they have to they have to work really hard so 
we've proven today that um, Anfield is always special for us and we can put in performances like this at, at any given moment. You've all been so good at staying level and just doing your job game after game throughout the season. Mm -hmm. Do you allow yourself to get a little bit excited now? In 24 hours you could be champions. Um, we know we're in that position but I wouldn't say we get overly excited. I think a lot of us will just watch it tomorrow not too um, overly excited. I think. We know City are a really strong team and we've got to prepare, prepare for the game next week no matter what. So whether they drop points tomorrow or not, we've still got to go there and try and beat them. So that's what's on our minds. If, if things happen uh, to go well tomorrow, we'll obviously celebrate. But uh, when push comes to shove, we've still got seven games left, I think it is. And we're going to try and get all, all 21 points from there. Thanks, Trent. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Cheers. you. Trent Alexander-Arnold with Guy Mowbray. I think before we go, um, Colin, you could probably settle... Uh, you know, me and Mark Lawrenson's slight disagreement. I mean, I've just said that. You're going to pick beef? Mark over me, aren't you? You're going to pick Mark over Not me. Not necessarily. We, we, have a, we, me. we have a checkered past. <laughs> uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold free kick. I went sort of for the big, oh, great, sensational. And Mark was a bit more like, well, you know, just calm down. It was a good free kick. It wasn't like <sighs> But that's incredible. ex-footballers for you. They can spoil any goal. <laughs> they, they do it all the time. There's nothing worse as a fan when you're like, great goal. And they, they always say the same thing, don't they? The line of doom from every pundit. Keeper should have done better for me. Kills That's it. what you said, Mark. Kills it. Well, he should have in the wrong. Did, it was in the wrong flaming position, by the way. That's why. <laughs> right. Well, Crossman, I'm backing you Come all on. the way, all Come the on. way. Superb freak. And on that note, um, once we get post-COVID, me, you, the Coral, and a couple of cans. Is that a date? Uh, yes, I'm in. Good. Excellent. Loving that. John and Mark are going to stay. You can hit the drink as much as you want because next in five live.